committed at Boston College. Eagle fans, young and old, hope BC can erase memory of their 1998 visit from Navy. Two years ago, a tense battle, a Navy comeback, and a final chance for BC. Today, the Eagles look for revenge as the midshipmen return to storm the heights. Welcome, everybody, to Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Big East football. Today, the Boston College Eagles play host to the midshipmen from the Naval Academy. Hi, everybody. Dave Sims along with Jeff Boston. Good to have you with us. And this is turning out to be one of the more exciting series in college football, Navy and BC. And BC today, to get a W, what they want to do is get their ground game going and get it going early. You talk to the Navy head coach, Charlie Weatherby. That's job one for the Navy defense is to stop the running attack. And it's going to be a full chore. Cedric Washington, number 35, the senior tailback. He's going to gain most of his yards behind the uh, tackles. And we'll talk about this big offensive line later. The guy you need to remember, William Green, the sophomore running back. He wears number one before he leaves here. He'll be number one, believe me. Has a chance to be a star in this league. You see the numbers for the year, 248 yards rushing, 4.5 per carry coming out of the tailback position, 124 yards per game from the tailback. One thing you've got to do if you're Navy, stop the run, put seven or eight people to line the scrimmage, and try and contain the running attack, make Hasselback throw the ball. And the cornerbacks are going to have to come up big today for Navy. Now, for Navy on the offensive side of things, their third quarterback sent to spring. Ed Malinowski gets the start today because of injuries to Brian uh, Broadwater and Brian Madden. And you look at his numbers, first career start. He's only thrown three passes in college football. He's a coach's son. The Navy staff's excited to see what this young man can do. More physical runner inside. Look for the running attack to be key for Navy. Can Tim Hasselbeck, can he lead BC to a win over Navy? Like his brother did 19, back in 1996. There's a good look at Matt. We'll see who rules the heights today. Right after this break, Mike Gleason is in the AT&T studio to look at what else is happening this Saturday in Big East football. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Gleason. Welcome back to the AT&T Big East studio. This week, three conference teams look to continue the league's impressive march through their non-conference schedules. But the Big East gets its first real national spotlight game today. For this, we head for West Virginia, where they roll out the carpet for the Miami Hurricanes. This series has had some close matchups on the Mountaineers' home turf, as three out of the last four games played in Morgantown have been decided by a total of nine points. More on this game during halftime in the AT&T Big East Wire. Also in action today are Syracuse uh, traveling to East Carolina for a matchup with the Pirates. And after the big win over Penn State, Pittsburgh tries to go to 4-0 for the first time since 1991 as they host the Scarlet Knights from Rutgers. And the final game today involving a conference team has Temple stepping outside the league, hosting Eastern Michigan. Tim Hasselbeck and the Boston College Eagles are ready for action as the Eagles raise the curtain on their home schedule. We'll send you back to Chestnut Hill with Dave Sins and Jeff Bostic after these messages. We are ready for some Big East football here at Alumni Stadium, Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. The Naval Academy taking on Boston College. Boston College, one and one, Navy 0 and two. On your left is Chris Lepore. On the right, number 34 is Rashad Jamal. And look at this, the numbers there by Jamal. Getting ready to get the kickoff from Boston College. Pivotal game for both of these football teams early in the season. Maybe looking for their first win. BC hoping to improve to 2-1 and one on Parents' Day. Sandro Scortino, redshirt freshman from Markham, Ontario in Canada. He's going to get us underway. And he does have a big leg. About five yards deep. And Tom O'Brien real pleased with that part of his kicking game. Let's welcome back John Sanders. He's down on the sidelines. John, what do you have for us? Dave, the most obvious connection between these two schools is Coach O'Brien of B.C. He played for the Naval Academy. 
He has both Army and Navy on his schedule this year. He was an assistant coach at Navy. How important is it to beat Army or Navy? Well, if you go in his office, you'll find a piece of a goalpost from 1970. That was the only year while he was at the Naval Academy that they beat Army. So I think we know where he stands on that issue of Army versus Navy. You bet. All right, John, thank you very much. Unique spread offense run by the middle, the Nick Shipman here. And how about that as they run their fullback, Rasheem, Raheem Lambert up the middle. And that's a key to stopping Navy. Stop the fullback, stop the quarterback. Lambert, you saw him. Football news, all independence team. 118 yards rushing last week against Georgia Tech. Billy Hubbard threw a TD pass against Georgia Tech last week. 34 yards to Gene Reese, and Hoot stalls their best lineman. Given name is Edward. Second down, eight. Fullback again, but a good play by Malinowski to pull it out. Nicely done as he gets it up to the 30-yard line. He's close to a first down. There is a penalty flag on the play. The officials today out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Joseph Ryder is the referee. Take a look at that BC defense. Keith Levitt up front. High school All-American team captain when he was at Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Ryan Birch, former tight end and fullback, now moved to uh, middle linebacker, replaces Frank Chamberlain, who was an outstanding all-conference performer a year ago, and one of their veterans in the secondary, Jonathan Ordway, Offside. of Sefner, Florida. The Five yards, still second down. Ordway, one of the quickest DBs in the Big East. That's an interesting decision by the Navy staff to take the penalty. They were looking, looked like they were inches away from a first down. We'll, we'll see how this plays out for him. It gives him two downs to pick up four yards. Charlie Weatherby, head coach of the Naval Academy, 45 years old. Out of Sudan, Kansas. There's the pitch back, and they got the first down and more as they pitched it back to Josh Bach, a senior out of Peekskill, New York. That'll be a first down for Navy. One thing you'll notice all afternoon from the Navy offense, watch the blocking downfield by their wide receivers, some of the best in the country. Terrell Moreland, number 23, with a big block on the edge. If you're not a, a team that defends the option, and especially the spread, the way the Navy, the Navy will run this thing, tough to prepare for. BC's had two weeks. Big difference from uh, the normal situation. As they run it up the middle again. Not a lot doing there as Lambert made the carry. And the other thing, Jeff, what you were talking about, uh, offensive coordinator Mike Vaught talked about, and as well as Charlie Weatherby, they like to get, what, 150 knockdowns a game, they, and they pride themselves at the second, at the uh, wideouts, getting big numbers during the course of a game. Well, this is a run-based offense. Led the nation last year with 292 yards per game. Blocking downfield will be a key. Here's the pitch back of Bach. A couple of good blocks in the secondary. He's got the first down, and Navy is on the move. Once again, number 23, Terrell Moreland. Big block on the edge. If you look at the BC squad, one thing stands out. Watch the left of your screen. Watch number 23, Marlin. Right on the edge. Oh. And you'll see this all afternoon. Navy's receivers do a tremendous job blocking downfield. And you're talking about yards after the catch. How about yards after the block? That was about a six-yard gain. Good job, young man. First and 10 right at midfield. Lambert. Tell you what, good drive as he carries Scott Bradley for about three or four yards. And Navy, an offensive unit that has struggled in its first couple of games, looking pretty good here at Boston College against a very young Boston College defense, Jeff. Well, you see the numbers for the year. Last year we said they, met, they led the nation. This year they're 72nd. The one thing they're going to have to do is exactly what they've done this first drive. It's tough to lose football games when you don't give up possession of the ball. Pull back up the middle again to about the just shy of the 40 yard line the inches short of another first down and the one thing to beat this Navy squad last week against Georgia Tech in Atlanta the number of turnovers they fumbled the ball six times they lost four of them and you wonder about what's the mindset of this football team 0 and 2 you lose your starting quarterback we're down to the third quarterback and right now Malinowski has yet to throw a ball Third down, pitch back, pockets work today a lot. It continues to be effective as Navy gets another first down to the 36-yard line. This drive started at the 20-yard line for the midshipman. Josh Bach, political science major. 
Charlie Weatherby likes this ball club. What a tremendous job he has done at the Naval Academy. Box three carries, 25 yards. Charlie, a quarterback during his days at Oklahoma State, graduated OSU in 1977. Throwing deep downfield. Double coverage with Brian Williams. They don't send a lot of folks out on their pass patterns, and they tried to break one down the middle. Malinowski misses on his first opportunity. And even though he missed it, I like the call. Your ability to run the ball from the 20-yard line, you move the ball 45 yards, you throw your first pass, and you're setting up that play action later. Watch him come back underneath. Run a little four route underneath, catch something there. You got the linebacker's attention with your running. And number 25, Pat Haynes at fullback right now. Quarterback draw, Malinowski for a couple. This has got to be a murderous offense to prepare for, say if you only got those three days. And the one thing, if you're a linebacker, you've typically got reads. Look at the fullback. Well, they've got two slot backs. They've got a running back. Well, they're going in different directions, so sometimes their reads are not real true for you. I bet you the Naval Academy defense doesn't even like defending their own team. Oh, I heard that. Third down long here for Navy. Haynes still the fullback. All kinds of misdirection here. Bach to about the 25. He's close to a first down. And there's an injured Navy player. One of their linemen is in some serious pain, and he's one of their good ones, too. Philip Ye, number 63. Once again, we go back to our favorite play, the option. Watch the blocking downfield. Willie Poole gets aggressive on the corner, makes the tackle. Looks like a first down for Navy. You have to be concerned when you look out on the field and see one of your veteran linemen. Not a good sign when you see the young man grabbing his face mask. This is the first time they've played on the artificial surface. And I can tell you from prior experiences, folks, the man that invented this stuff, <laughs> close to a woodshed and a board, you, you figure out the rest of it. I love Yogi Berra's quote. I don't trust anything that a cow can't eat. Yeah, well, that, that's pretty accurate. And they're going to have to get uh, new personnel on the field here for Navy. Dan Venuto is going to get a shot to, to get in the game. Let's see if we can see what happened to Mr. Ye. Oh, see his left knee? It gets caught underneath him. Uh, not putting any weight on it. That's not a good sign either. What? Little thing from football. Hyperflex is what happened to his left knee. I wouldn't expect to see this young man back this afternoon. Well, maybe he's... Uh, Chewed up four minutes and 40 seconds on this drive so far. So the addition of Dan Venuto, he's a 6'6", 288-pound junior out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Number 68, he'll uh, replace Phillip on the Navy offensive line. That was good for a first down. Midshipmen at the BC 25 on the opening drive. They've racked up four first downs already. Malinowski to the edge, pitches back. Daring play executed nicely. Knocked out of bounds at about the 19-yard line is Josh Bach. You have to be impressed with Malinowski early in the game. What happens during the course of practice week once you get into fall football? We talked about the receivers blocking downfield. This is your running back, Lambert. What a tremendous job knocking the linebacker, Scott Bradley, off his feet. Malinowski looks like he's in total control of this offense. Sure enough, Lambert. Pitch it back to number 23, Marlon Terrell. And just short of a first down as he tries to get around the left side. Knocked down on that play. The referees are going to bring it back a little bit. Said his knee was on the turf. Well, Ryan Birch. These are some tackle. long pitches. Mm -hmm. I mean, these would be complete passes in a lot of people's offenses. That's right. Good call by the officials. You saw his right knee hit the ground. But this is a situation the Navy offense doesn't want to be in all afternoon. Looking at third and six, seven, eight, and longer. So we'd be talking two down territory. Sure enough. A couple of wide outs in a spread formation. Option. They've run it well to the right. Malinowski to the edge. Takes a pop at the 15-yard line. Good fill there by Boston College Ralph Perret. Ralph Parent, rather, the strong safety, sophomore out of Brookline, Mass. 
And Malinowski shows you a little bit of what we talked to with Mike Vaught, the offensive coordinator. He shows you that speed. He gets on the edge, and it looks like Guthrie has an angle on him. And you know what? Not afraid to lower the shoulder and, and deliver the blow. Not at all. Yeah, they said the coaches were telling us he's most likely to come back with a bloody nose, <laughs> turning it up inside. David Hills is two for two field goals this year. He hit a 36 and a 41-yarder against Georgia Tech. And the late addition with Philip Ye undoubtedly was on the special teams. And, and that's when replacement was not standing That's when by. a young man is not into the football game on the sideline. If you're backing up, and I'm sure the coaching staff would maybe go through this every week, who do you back up on field goal protection? Who do you back up on punt return? This is something that costs the football team a game occasionally when you burn a timeout needlessly. That's right. 9.20 to go first quarter. Brian Schultz was the uh, late addition trying to get in there. And you can see this Navy drive a little bit heavy on the rush side. 11 carries, only one pass attempt. Charlie Weatherby and his offensive staff have to be pleased with what they've seen. And the big key, Dave, if Navy is able to do this all afternoon, you see Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator from BC. It's got to be a nightmare. You have to burn kerosene late into the night oh, yeah. to try and get ready for this offense. But if you're Charlie Weatherby in the offensive staff, you have to be completely pleased with what you've seen from Malinowski, your ability to control the clock and gain first downs. That's right. You said they have set the tempo. This is how it's going to be today, boys. And the execution, as you would expect from a service academy, has been outstanding. And we talked about yesterday, Charlie Weatherby, well known for a bag of tricks. Oh, yeah. Could we see a fake field goal? Wouldn't stun me. Could we see a fake uh, fake field goal? Uh, hey, how about the onside kick? They pulled it off twice. Well, this attempt is a 33-yarder. And here is your bag of tricks, Malinowski. Keeper, got it, first down, Navy. Called it. Nicely done. Nicely done by the Naval Academy. And Frank, this is probably an eccentric moment, folks. <laughs> Looks like a regular field goal, huh? No, no attempt. Good thing about having your quarterback as a holder. Look at him. Confusion up front for BC. Easy first down. Malinowski, three rushes, 11 yards. Back to the fullback. They pitch it. Oh, picked off. Let's see, he's got it. Bach is going to be there. Boy, I tell you what, a lot of high risk. The execution to that point was very good. I think that ball was partially tipped by Willie Poole. That ball was almost intercepted. You bet. And he would have been, <laughs> he could have walked home. We talked about the length of these pitches. Look how far your slide back is away. He is at least seven or eight yards away. The one thing that is key Look at the alertness to go back and get on the ball by number 43, Bach. Willie Poole should have had a loss of 15 on the play. Well, that would have been a huge emotional break for Boston College. Second down, 25 for Navy. Bach in motion. Lambert, the fullback across the 25. So, so far, that's the only uh, mistake that the Naval Academy has made. Now we got uh, two injured players. My goodness. Scott Bradley is 54. And that doesn't look good at all. You know, can't make out that second number, but Scott Bradley, an important outside linebacker. Tom O'Brien said he may be the most improved player on that very young defensive unit. And Bradley trying to get up and looking for that other, trying to get that other number. And we'll uh, come back to you here at Boston College in a moment, but let's send it down to uh, Mike Leeson in our AT&T studios. Well, Dave, Northwestern at Wisconsin, the Badgers, the number six in the country, 11-game winning streak on the line, but Zach Kustak got on the board first for the Wildcats. He turns it up. And heads down the field 28 yards for a Wildcat touchdown. And right now, it is 7-0 Cats in the first, 11.25 to go. The Badgers with the football for the first time. Let's go back to Chestnut Hill with Dave and Jeff. All right, Mike, thank you very much. A couple of injuries on the field right now. Derek Rossi, a sophomore defensive end out of Medford, New York. They are attending to him. We'll be back. More of our game, maybe in BC after this timeout. 
Welcome back, everybody. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostig, and John Sanders and the Big East crew with you here in Boston College. Opening drive of this game. And not the sign you were looking for. Scott Bradley, Jr. out of Hanover, Mass., is wheeled off the field here at Alumni Stadium. The drive continues for Navy. Big third down here. And the fullback nowhere to go. Smoked in the middle. Nicely done by Doug Goodwin. Doug Goodwin, a freshman on this ball club out of Freeport, New York, on the island. So Lambert nowhere to go. And Navy in a fourth and long ball at the 27-yard line. So David Hills, last time he came onto the field to line up for a field goal. Going to go for a 43-yard field goal. High snap, bobbled. Loose ball, and pick it up and run. Kicked it out of bounds. Can you believe that? Number 28, Jonathan Ordway had an opportunity to pick it up and just get out of here. And he dropped it. That was a tough snap. Billy Hubbard, the holder. The snap was high. Hubbard should have certainly been able to put the ball down. Jonathan Ordway, number 28, the cornerback, a two-sport star, football and track. He thought he was off to the races. One thing I'm going to tell you, young man, possession of the ball, then run. We've seen that a couple of times in the last three weeks where guys have had the opportunity to get the hands on, especially DBs. They haven't been able to put it away. And that young man finished third in the 60-meter dash in the Big East Track Championship, so he would have been gone. Real good chance it would have been lights out, no doubt about it. DeWalt in motion. Washington the call. About three, four yards, running behind his left guard. I'll tell you about the BC offensive unit. Cedric Washington, we've spoken a lot about him, 131 yards, averaging 4.7 yards per pop. Our Holyoke Mass, Dedrick DeWalt. Can be a game breaker. He's got five catches for a buck fifty so far this season. And Paul Zakaskis, the leader on a veteran offensive line. He's a four-year starter. Second down, six for BC. Washington looking for a seam to cut back on. Picks up about three. Check out the Navy defensive folks. Brad Wimsett up front, coming off a career year in 98. Jake Bowen, he's the man that makes it happen. They try to funnel all the uh, tackling opportunities to the linebackers back after two-year Mormon mission. And Chris Lepore, one of the best free safeties in all of college football, preseason All-American. Matter of fact, the first since the great Napoleon McCallum back in 1984. Third down three for BC. Out of the gun, Hasselbeck. Looks left, throws left. He's got his fullback, Ryan Hutzler. And it's good for a first down. Tim Hasselback looks so much like his brother Matt, even wears the same number. And the one thing you like about both of these young men, their decisions with the football. Poise in the pocket, good throw, good catch. So BC after the botched field goal attempt by Navy. At the Navy 37. Hasselback throws right this time. He's got the wall. Knocked down quickly. Justin Takasaki out of Honolulu, Hawaii, brings it down. Justin, number 31, is looked at Dedrick. Caught 38 catches last year. Almost 16 yards a pop. And last week, really exploded against Army. Big ball here. And good wheels, too. See you later. Touchdown for Dedrick DeWall. Cedric Washington gets out of trouble. Picks up the first down. Well done by Cedric. A little bit of an ad lib there. Inside linebacker number 58. Ryan Hamilton had his, I'll take that back. Andy Carthen, the freshman getting the start this afternoon, had it for a loss. That's when you got to wrap up. You got to make the tackle. You like what you see in Cedric Washington. Runs with power. Washington, three carries for 10 yards so far. Picked up a first down. 
Ball at the 27 of Navy. Hasselbeck got some time. Left corner. Down there. Nice catch to the two-yard line. Dewan Daniels. It'll be first and goal for Boston College. Inside the one. 26 yards on the completion. 26 yards on the completion, and he also beats number 26, the All-American Chris Lepore. Tremendous job of throwing the football by Hasselbeck. Tremendous protection. And Daniels, at some point, Lepore's got to find the football. Daniels does a good job. And remember, folks, he's looking back into the sun. Good catch. Good concentration. They brought William Green in. He's the deep back. Green gets the call. Walks in. Touchdown, Boston College. That's almost like a potential 14 or uh, 10-point well, swing with Navy blowing the opportunity to put a three-spot on the board. And the other thing it does for the Boston College offense, and we talked to the Navy staff, not shortening the field, not turning the football over, and converting opportunities. Navy with a very impressive first drive. You have to be impressed with what you've seen from the uh, BC offense, and namely Tim Hasselback. Here's a point after Mike Sutton. Got under it a little bit, but he drove it through. Mike Sutton, a senior from Ellicott City in Maryland. William Green, his first carry is a good one for BC, and the Eagles lead it 7 0. Today's Big East football game is brought to you by 1 800 Call ATT for collect calls. Buick, isn't it time for a real car? National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. And by Bass Ale. True to character since 1777. Welcome back, everybody, to Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, and John Sanders with you. Sandro Scrutino, his second kickoff of the day. Another boomer. This one will go through the end zone. Outstanding soccer player in Markham, Ontario. Played rugby. Got a big leg. He's 5'10", 200, and he can really nail it. Let's go down to John Sanders. Injury update for you, David. Philip Ye, who left on crutches from the Navy sideline. They took him inside. X-rays. His left ankle is broken. The update for Scott Bradley, the linebacker. He's got a shin problem for B.C. Derek Rossi, the defensive end. He's got a knee problem. Both of those guys have been taken inside for evaluation. So we're losing them rather rapidly down here so far today. Stay healthy, John. All right, no lie. 424 to go as Navy starts this drive. Malinowski turns it up. Picks up a few, about 24-yard line. We've and got a flag on the field, and we met the officials leaving our hotel. You see the holding penalty against the Naval Academy, the ACC crew, and they promised us that they wouldn't throw any flags this <laughs> afternoon. You know, you can't trust officials. <laughs> we saw Joe Ryder. And he had his game face on, and he had the ACC jacket on, sort of gave it away. I said, you ready to work? He says, oh, yeah, let's do it. And I tried to do the old thing when I was playing. <laughs> I took the uh, pocket watch. You're going to forget <laughs> all numbers. <laughs> and surely it didn't work. I'm not a very good hypnotist. From down your part of the country, too. Holding on the offense. Half a distance to the goal. Repeat first down. You can tell from that accent he's a little bit south of Boston. Oh, yeah. Yeah, riding over here to the ballpark today, listening to the sports radio up here, folks bemoaning the fate once again of the Boston Red Sox. Is it still the curse of the Bambino? I think it's the curse of Carl Everett. Uh, I would go there. Yeah, I would I totally mean, this buy guy, that. This guy needs some psychological evaluations. Anger management needs a quick Whatever hand. Mike Tyson is taking, double it. Now I'm asking you to throw a little sprint. Oh, good effort by Josh Bach ball a little bit behind him and that's the one thing for a quarterback that hasn't played much there's no replacement for experience and it looked like Malinowski not only going to his left hand side not only going to his left side look at the cushion that the uh, cornerbacks from BC are giving look like he hurried to throw a little bit Bach was in the open it should have been a throw and a catch 17 rush they do keep it simple Sprint out left, throw, got it. Gets it to Bach, went back to the same play. They're close to the original line of scrimmage. And you shouldn't be surprised by the play selection by the Naval Academy. Last season led the nation in rushing. Secondly, 
Average 57 runs per game. Look at that. They want to keep it on the ground, folks. And last week was very uncharacteristic for Navy. Throwing the ball 40 times, what happens? They wind up losing 40-13 to 13 at Georgia Tech. Charlie Weatherby said 92 plays. Look, it's a long time to break down the film. Malinowski flies. The timing disrupted on that one. And he tries to get it out to number 83, Dominic Bailey. And in completion, Dominic is sophomore from Houston. It's a good defensive series for Boston College. And the one thing you'll see with the Naval offense this afternoon, they're not going to be a type of offense that's going to be successful with Malinowski throwing the ball three or four times in a possession. Penalties will certainly stop drives, and that's what happened with the holding penalty on first down. Brian Williams on the punt, good snap. Low liner, Dedrick DeWalt watches it go out of bounds at the Boston College 47-yard line. A punt of 35 yards. We'll take a timeout back to Alumni Stadium in a moment with BC leading by a touchdown. Welcome back, everybody. Boston College taking the field, leading 7-0. And on this play, first time we are noticing him, Ryan Reed, number 14, at the bottom of your screen, two years ago from this almost the same position, caught a huge touchdown pass when he was playing for Navy. Here's Washington. Nice running run. Breaks a couple of tackles. Picks up nine into Navy territory. Let's get an update on what one of the better passers is doing. Drew Brees. We sent it down to Mike Gleason in the AT&T studio. That's right, Dave. And Drew Brees strikes against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. A Brees with the 71 touchdown strikes until Vinny Sutherland takes in number 72. That sets the Purdue all-time record passing Mark Herman. 7-0, three more, and he has the Big Ten mark. All right, thank you, Mike. And good play by Navy this time. They try to get it outside, but the linebacker, Daryl Hill out of Jupiter, Florida, makes the tackle. And talking to Charlie Weatherby yesterday, he said one thing about their defense that's different from a couple years back. Back then, their linebackers were guys that would fill the hole, plug the hole. Now they're runners. The people that have to do a number up there for the Navy defense this afternoon, Wimsat, the big senior co-captain, particularly their nose guard, Zets, as far as not getting removed from the line of scrimmage, and guys like Mike Wagner. Good job with penetration by Daryl Hill. Three wide out look here for B.C., They'll run it with Washington to the edge. Got the first down. And good blocking on that right side. Sprung it free for Cedric Washington. That right side with Mark Colombo and Paul Zukowskis. And the one thing when you talk to the Navy defensive coordinator, Tim DeRuder, they, they thoroughly expect Tom O'Brien to take this big offensive line, try and pound the running game at him. But one thing that he brings into mind, they're going to take six or seven shots deep per game and try and break one. We saw what happened last week with DeWalt with two big touchdown patches. Tight end is Mike Guazzo lined up on the right side. This is DeWalt in motion. Blitz by Navy. Picked up. Swing pass. Washington. Open field. Great move. Takes a hit. Delivers a hit. 30 yard line. Got a first down for Boston College. Cedric Washington packing 200 pounds on his 5'10 frame. Picks up 12. Good job of Hasselback. First of all, looking in the middle of the field, turning to his running back. Watch Hasselback. Look where his eyes are, middle of the field. Now he's going to turn to the side. Simply not fair to ask a defender to try and tackle this young man in the open field. One thing you like about him, watch his legs continuing to move. Fake it. Nice fake all day. Hasselback got a man down there. He's interfered with for the touchdown for Austin College. It's Dedrick DeWalt. The fifth TD pass this season for Hasselbeck. And the third for DeWalt. 30 yards on the play. The interference call has certainly uh, declined. We talked about it. BC is going to take shots to try and lengthen the field, spread the field, go vertical. Exactly what happens. Tremendous touch by Hasselbeck, and we saw him several times last year, but it looks like he's really matured into a real poised quarterback. And I'll tell you something. You're talking about the bloodline. His dad played professionally and, you know, had a Super Bowl ring that, uh, well, maybe I could have had, but <laughs> I'll tell you what, Matt, his older one, what a tremendous job. Starting the game 5 for 5, 82, 82 yards and a touchdown for Hasselbeck. That'll work. 
Mike Sutphin point after. It's a lot of air under it. Nice and easy. Bangs it through. Well, Hasselbeck, great play fake here too, Jeff. And if you're the Naval Academy, you're in a catch-22. Do you stop the run? You try and put seven, eight people at the line of scrimmage. What a great extension. Beats number 17, Marcus Johnson. See, he takes the bite right there. And that's a little too late. You know what? If you're going to interfere with him, don't allow yeah, him to catch the him. football. That's exactly right. Knock him down. <laughs> no question about and Mr. it. Mr. Hasselback is certainly excited about his pass. This is a lethal offense. And, you know, we talked to Tom O'Brien in his office yesterday. Very disappointed how they opened the season on the road at West Virginia. Didn't think his offense, particularly his offensive line, competed. They spotted West Virginia 17-0 and tried to build a comeback. They said they hit us in the mouth. We had no response. And that was shocking considering all the uh, veterans on that offensive unit. This is a senior-laden offensive line and probably the leaders of this football team. And Tom O'Brien coached the offensive line for a long time. Very good offensive mind himself. This is the one thing about kickers. Why don't you wear the same? Are you going to tell me that one <laughs> shoe... You're going to actually kick the ball better and, and, and you know, get it the same color. Yeah, but you got to like this Scortino guy because he was a rugby player, too, and a running back and a kicker in high school. So he's not your average kicker. He's I, got bet some... he makes, I bet he makes no tackles today. All right. At the one-yard line, some room there, and a penalty flag, too. Brought back by Rashad Jamal out of Berkeley, California. You know what? We ought to start something where kickers have to wear the same color shoe. What do you think? Well, we probably should start giving uh, prizes for tackles, too. Five plays, 53 yards, just over two minutes on that. He is a good kicker. He goes back and picks up his tee. Normally, they'll have one of the equipment managers have to run out. See, he's got it in his hand. And kickers are weird. You know, they don't want anybody getting their kicking tee. <laughs> and they don't want to put their helmet in a tackle, either. It's like, hey, don't mess with my driver. If, if you're hitting the ball well. You can't be barring my driver. Same kind of deal here. Five for five, Hasselbeck. Can't beat that start. I like his play action, too. It looked like it reminded me of Boomer Esiason, and Steve DeBerg and those guys. Boomer Esiason was unquestionably the best guy at running a play action fake. How many times did the camera people even get thrown? Oh, absolutely. He and DeBerg had that whole thing where they bend over, and you never knew where the ball was. So if you're a linebacker or a And they had the guy, same coach at one point, Sam Weish. No question. They definitely share that in common as Lambert goes left tackle. Check in on some Big Ten action, Ohio State, Penn State, Mike Gleason in our AT&T studio. Well, Simsy, they had a half-hour delay in Columbus, Ohio because of lightning and some heavy rain, but the Buckeyes still kind of slushy, but they go 92 yards in 10 plays. Derek Holmes had 142 last week, takes it down to the one-yard line. Buckeyes score from there, 7-0 over Penn State, 10.44 to go in the first. Let's go back to uh, Simsy and Jeff. All right, thanks, Mike. That Penn State team struggling big time. And right now, not a good play offensively. Great defensive play by Boston College. As the corner came up and just leveled him. Good job. Play made by Paul Cook, a redshirt freshman DB from Berea, Ohio. So we've got one quarter in the books. Tom O'Brien facing off against his alma mater, United States Naval Academy. They've got two scores on the board. Green a one-yard run and Hasselbeck a 26-yard pass to DeWalt. 14-0 for Boston College. We'll continue with Big East football after this timeout on a gorgeous day in Boston. Welcome back. Start of the second quarter here. Navy with the ball. Trailing 14-0. Malinowski throws and almost intercepted. And tried to get it to Marlon Terrell. And let's get down to the sidelines. Injury update with John Sanders. BC has also lost the player. You know that Philip Ye will not come back for Navy with that broken ankle. Scott Bradley has a knee problem. He is out for the rest of the game. However, defensive end Derek Rossi, who had the shin problem, is back and he will play. John, thank you very much. Ryan Williams set the punt. Pat Haynes come on late. Williams, good-looking punt. 
spiral jab. DeWalt from about the 38. Can get to the edge. He's got a shot. 50. Sideline 30. And they knock him down at the 28-yard line. The punter, Brian Williams, had to stick his nose in there and prevent further damage. Nice looking return by the special teams of Boston College. DeWalt, dangerous back there. Averaging 5.4 yards on that one. He blew that average up big time. You have to wonder what number 40, Jeff Gaddy, was doing. He was right in the face of DeWalt. No fair catch. I mean, he had a license to really open him up right there. DeWalt proves that he's dangerous after catching the football. 48 yards on the punt. The return, 35 yards. Charlie Weatherby is arguing the fact that he thinks that Dedrick DeWalt was fair catching the football. And maybe that's what Jeff Gaddy thought. Yeah, you can see Charlie Weatherby motioning in his arm. Take another look at it at some point. Dave. Charlie Weatherby's about seven yards out on the field right now. Talking to the field judge, and they're going to discuss this. Field judge is Jim Coleman. This is an ACC crew. I'll tell you what, a huge difference. And Charlie's not going to get any satisfaction. ACC officials, Brian St. Pierre and a quarterback. Tom O'Brien likes to get him in for a series or so in the second quarter. And I tell you what, Charlie is passionate about that call, to say the least. Down 14-0, and right now, BZ threatening to add to it. His speed guy is number one, William Green. A couple of yards left side. Here's another look. Does DeWalt, that first one, he did give one wave with the right arm. But I think what has to happen if you're a punt returner, the hand has to be over your head. That is, that's, that's my understanding. And the thing about it, if you're Gaddy, take the shot, try and tackle him. If it's a 10-yard penalty, so what? You're seeing here. Green runs through one tackle. Picks up a couple. Let's get back down with a Syracuse update. Here's Mike Gleason in our AT&T studios. Well, Dave, it rained for 16 straight hours in Greenville, North Carolina. Tied at three. And James Mungro caps off a 66-yard drive for the Orangemen. And right now they're on top. 10-3, to 13.05 to go before halftime. Let's go back where the sun is shining at Chestnut Hill. That it is, Mike and Brian St. Pierre trying to engineer another TD drive. BC two for two on third down thus far. They'll go from a spread formation. St. Pierre blitz coming, throws. Single coverage down there and a drop by Jamal Burke. Jamal, a sophomore from Brockton, Mass, had an opportunity there to get a first down and get it inside the 15-yard line. And you wonder what the thinking is if, if you're Tom O'Brien in, in substituting your quarterbacks this early in the game. They like St. Pierre, but Hasselback, 5 for 5, 82 yards and a touchdown pass. I'm the guy that when I'm at the uh, blackjack table, I'm staying with the hot dealer. I hear you. Field goal attempt is good from 39 yards. Well done by Mike Sutton, who is 3 for 3 on the season. So BC tacks on a three spot, now leading 17-0. Charlie Weatherby working on the officials. He still claims that that official that the uh, DeWalt waved his right hand, which he did once, signifying uh, that he might be looking for a fair catch. I'll tell you what, that's a big uh, turnaround there since. BC was able to add three on the board there after the 35-yard punt return by DeWalt. Keep in mind, two years ago, we were up here for this matchup, and maybe he was down 18 late in the game and came back to win it. Final running room here by Jamal. And a nice carry to about the 35-yard line, Rashad Jamal. Let's take a look at our Buick first quarter stats. 
time of possession is all Navy, but it's about putting points on the board, too. It's about putting points on the board. The one thing that really doesn't show there, Hassel back in the first quarter, 5 for 5, 82 yards passing and a touchdown. The one thing that also doesn't show up, Dave, Navy shortening the field and blowing an opportunity to put points on the board the first drive. Sure enough, very impressive drive. Ain't got nothing to show for it. Pitch. Oh, that's an eliminator there. Bach got drilled. Well done by Paul Cook, the red shirt freshman. He unloads. He's coming off a strong spring here at BC. We talked about the Naval Academy and their wide receivers blocking downfield. 81, Brian Williams gets beat right there. Who pays for it? How about number 43, Josh Bach? Go have a talk in the huddle. Yeah. Friendly, I don't think it's going to be. And they get a pass outside to Billy Hubbard. Uh, so again, we'll leave Navy with a third down and about six. Frank Speziani. Wouldn't you hate to the be play? the defensive coordinator? Oh, no question. Of coordinators. Hey, signaling in all these signals. You see Malinowski's numbers thus far. They're going to go out of an eye formation. Maybe two of five on third down. Make it two of six. Sack in the backfield. Nicely done by their middle linebacker, Ryan Birch, out of Lutherville, Maryland. Tremendous call by Frank Spaziani right there. Comes through clean. And if you're Ryan Birch, you have to like your change. He used to be the fullback, used to be lead blocking. Well, now you get an opportunity to fill the hole. Tremendous job in chasing the quarterback down. Two things you can be in football, the hammer or the nail. Right now, he's the hammer. Unblocked. Third Navy punt. Another good one by Williams. DeWalt this time breaks two tackles, but then they come back and finish it off. So Navy, a much better job on punt coverage, a 46-yard effort by Brian Williams. When we come back, it'll be BC ball. They lead 17-0. Back here at Boston College, Charlie Weatherby is going to watch BC put it in play from the 25-yard line. And this is uh, the worst starting position thus far for BC this afternoon. BC had started at its own 49, 47, and then maybe 26 as a touchdown, touchdown, and a field goal. Hassel back, back in the game. Washington trying to get to the corner, puts his hand in the face of Chris Lepore, but Chris gets him out of bounds. Let's go downstairs. Now to John Sanders. You know, before the ball game, there was a little bit of a reunion here because Ryan Reed, number 14 for Boston College, was a big factor two years ago in this stadium and a huge win by Navy over Boston College. He decided to transfer after a great 1998 that included a big touchdown play. 78 yarder that helped Navy come back and win that football game. But after the season, he called around to see where he might be able to transfer. BC took one look at those films and said, come on up. We need you. And he has done a terrific job, and he is playing for Boston College's new team. Thanks, John. And running free, nice completion as Hasselbeck's poise was outstanding. He finds J.P. Camella, his older brother Greg, is a fullback with the Giants. 36 yards on the pickup. And once again, the Navy defense had an opportunity to make a play in the backfield. Number 52, Shaka Martin, should have tackled Hasselbeck. You know what? Could you see Camelo kind of cradling in that ball? That's the toughest catch when you're wide open in the field. We've talked about BC taking their shots downfield also. That they are. Let's see if Navy starts blitzing a little bit more. See what they can do. Let's get an update on the Penn State, Ohio State with Mike Leeson in our AT&T studios. All day, the Buckeyes 142 yards, Penn State 7. But check out this play. A little bit wet, but Belisari is still scoring through the air. Rambo wanted it. Darnell Sanders comes up with it. A big tight end gets the touchdown. 14-0, Buckeyes over Penn State. Dave? All right, thanks, Mike. I don't think in my lifetime I've seen Penn State struggle this badly. 
And Happy Valley is no longer happy, believe me. It's a valley. But they will not fire Joe Paterno. No. You notice that. Hasselbeck trying to keep his perfect game day going, and he does. Seven for seven. First down to the 16-yard line. Keith Hemmings with the catch. A lot of time for Hasselbeck. Going back there, paint by numbers. And the one thing that I think the BC offense has found, we like working against number 17, Marcus Johnson. Just a little out batter and throwing catch. And the one thing that you don't see with these statistics, you don't see the type of time his offensive line is allowing him. DeWalt is in motion. And how about that? Good play. Dewan Cromer, strong safety. Got in there, just wrecked that play. Camilla never had a chance. And tell you what, maybe Washington. He tried to bounce it outside and ran right into the whole play. And if you're Cromer, you're a guy that wants to get in there and make plays. Defensive staff was not exactly happy with the way he played against Georgia Tech. Getting back in, he didn't start the game. Brian Bourgeois, Bourgeois, all-time name right there. You know what, Cromer taking no Bourgeois. Hasselbeck, he's a, falling. A perfect seven for seven. 135 with the touchdown. Second and long, you're on the out, there's nobody home. Penalty flag. Hasselbeck takes it in the, inside the 15. Cromer, with some help, makes the stop for Navy. And a penalty flag back upfield at the 20-yard line. That's normally the place that the uh, line judge, Ernest Benson, will typically call holding. Call. Holding an illegal use of hands. We talked about the Navy receivers and their ability to block. Look at DeWalt. This is something that will not make his head coach, Tom O'Brien, very happy. The, you know, the one thing is a receiver. Holding on the offense, blocking the back on the offense. The block in the back is declined. The holding will be accepted. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. If you're a wide receiver, you expect the offensive linemen, the tight ends, the running backs to block for you. You know what? Let's reciprocate. Put a little bit more effort into your blocking downfield. Tom O'Brien, I guarantee you, Dana Bobble, the offensive coordinator, looks at this film. They grade each play. This will be a big negative. When you talk about how is a guy a complete football player, that's about what you see. Sure enough, not, not willing to block for his teammates downfield. It was not a stellar effort. Coming up on nine minutes to go. Out of the shotgun, Hasselbeck throwing, takes a shot. Good throw. It's right there for DeWalt. First and goal for Boston College. He may not be able to block, but he can run some routes and catch it. 27 yards on the pickup. And this is a ball that uh, Mr. Hasselbeck certainly will not put as one of his better thrown footballs. You know what? A little post pattern. It's not good when you see your uh, cornerback being turned around. Takasaki getting the start this week. DeWalt's a big-time player. Hasselbeck having a big-time afternoon. And a lot of guys are happy. Hasselbeck, end zone. Lepore intercepted by Navy. Now that was a poorly thrown ball. Good read and react by Chris Lepore. And look at the biggest cheerleader, Charlie Weatherby, down to the 18-yard line greeting his defense they needed something good to happen you see Tim Hasselback he is of the opinion that his running back number 43 JP Camella was held and that allowed uh, Laporte to intercept that football well there's a left for Navy now see if the offense can convert and you're talking about one play that can possibly turn a football game away yeah Hasselback is looking for Camella because I think he was held the officials, they told us they weren't going to throw many flags. <laughs> we got a busy game early. Well, here we go with Navy taking over at its own 20. Malinowski turns it up himself. Boy, he is taking some blows in there. Ramon Johnson unloaded on him. Senior out of Warrensville Heights, Ohio. And what a transformation Ramon Johnson has made. He was a wide receiver when he got here was switched to a cornerback, tore his ACL in 97, was moved to safety. But what has he done? 
He's led the team in tackles so far far in the year 2000. Malinowski, pitch, gets it outside, penalty flag, and down the sideline. Oh, good pop there. Good delivering of the blow. Rashad Jamal, 4 5 7 in the 40 out of Berkeley, California. There is a penalty flag back at the 24 yard line. That's a 27 yard pickup for Navy. Check that 34 yard pickup. Regardless of this penalty, you have to like the physical aspect that Jamal Rashad brings to this play. Offsides against the Boston College defense, the play will stand. That's a big play. That is huge. Dominic Bailey, number 83, watch the blocking downfield. Maybe a little bit of holding also. Here's what you like if you've got your running back. Rashad delivering the blow on Willie Bull, number Offsides. 30. On the defense, that penalty is declined. We have a dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yards to the run. Automatic first down. Wonder what that was a tackle for. Rudy Figure, one of our favorite uh, things to talk about. A little excessive woofing down there. I don't know if it was woofing. It was probably a late hit. And this is something we talked about the one play. Lapore making the uh, interception in the end zone and turning a football game around. Now their offense has got life. Yes, indeed. And you got a chance to put somebody away possibly have a 24-0 lead early in the uh, second quarter. Well, now Navy's turning it back in your way. Lambert, the fullback, and now BC calls some timeout. It's saw Tom Martin call the timeout, left defensive tackle. And Frank Spaziani sees his fellas come over. And didn't you see how he did that? The defense comes over to him and he kind of puts his hand up to kind of block his vision. Talk to the hand. Because the ears aren't <laughs> listening. <laughs> you know what? This is a tough job. Very. You know what? You want to be a defensive back? Ask Willie Poole about There's the, the hit number. right there. Maybe that's the hit right there out of bounds because it knocked him down. That probably was a personal foul right there. Dead ball. Well, Navy, we, we've seen that Navy is resilient. A lot of life. Tom knows all about that, being a Navy man himself. Because your penalty stirring. And you never see Tom, Tom O'Brien ever get really excited or really down. However, when we met with him yesterday afternoon, he was upset with the way his team competed against West Virginia. You know, and the one thing about it, it's early in the season, and you can right or wrong. Very resolute. the middle probably the best run thus far by Raheem Lambert and look at these wide receivers blocking downfield we talked about uh, things that Navy had to do run the ball control the clock not turn the football over and not shorten the field Charlie Weatherby said one thing when we run our offense the way it should happen at the end of the day we should have 150 knockdowns that's a lot that is a bunch of putting people on the turf Second down, short for Navy. Malinowski got some help with him. Turns the corner, got the first down. Bang down around the 16-yard line. First down, Navy. Malinowski shows me something from the speed standpoint. I think he runs like a 4-6-40. Defensive backs, number 27, Paul Cook for Boston College, unable to run this young man down. Former safety, a coach's son out of Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, the home of Harry Como. Well, you're a plethora of information. Yeah, we try. And off Interstate 79. Up the middle with Lambert. Boy, he's got a nice little surge there after that first and second hit. Right, he is a load. When you look at a running back that, that runs with his type of power, look at his legs. That's where you're going to see the power plant. Below the waist. Now you're going to need more than one guy to bring him down. And they've had some good fullbacks. Lambert, nine carries, 31 yards so far for Navy. Making a substitution along that offensive line for, for Navy. They just brought John Jeffrey out. I think it was Hoot Stahl that went back in. Malinowski, late pitch to the edge. Let's see. Touchdown, Navy. Rashad Jamal. And Navy's on the board. 
That execution again by the midshipman. 12 yards on the run. We're going to harp on it all afternoon. The slot backs, the wide receivers for the Naval Academy blocking downfield. If they're giving out those little decals that would stick on your helmet, give them one to number 39, Donnie Fricks. Tremendous job blocking downfield, allowing your running back to make it to the end zone. David Hills, junior out of Latham, New York, for the point after. Gets it through. And Navy is on the board. This young man, Rashad Jamal, 5'10", junior, out of St. Mary's High School in Berkeley, California, an aerospace engineering major. How many folks out there watching this game can say they're majoring in that? Well, Navy's on the board here with 6.28 to go in the half. Chris Lepore's first interception of the season set up the drive featuring Rashad Jamal, a 33-yard run, tackle on 15 for personal foul, then the 12 yards for the score, 17-7 BC. Watch the receiving core for Boston College. Look how close they are to the 10-yard barrier. They know one thing, the bag of tricks and the onside kick. Hills with the kickoff. Washington calling at the goal line. Changes direction and runs into some trouble at the 15-yard line. Good coverage by the Naval Academy. And so often when you look at football, it's a game of emotion. One play can make or break or turn the uh, favor in one's tide. Navy with the big interception from Chris Lepore. Their offense feeds off of that energy. And it results in a tremendous drive getting them back in this football game. Finished up by Rashad Jamal with the 12-yard touchdown run. Now their defense has to answer them. Sure enough, Green returns it to the 15-yard line. And here comes BC. Let's see if they take one of those deep strikes again. Hasselbeck got some time. Going to run it himself. Smart move. Get out of bounds. He still takes a blow to the 22-yard line where he was really hammered hard. And let's go down to Mike Gleason in our AT&T studios. Well, Simsy Syracuse, East Carolina, they've got a good one. It's tied up at 10-10. David Garrard, 6'3", 235, goes upstairs with the bomb. 46 yards to Marcellus Harris. That's the go-ahead for the Pirates at 17-10, 5.51 to go before halftime. Dave? All right, thank you, Mike. East Carolina always plays Big East teams tough. Talk about a blown coverage on that one. Second down and short here. East Carolina plays anybody tough. You bet, especially down that way. Washington, oh, as he hit hard, Chris Lepore got him. That's how you close. Free safety coming up to make the play. It'll be just short of a first down. And when you talk about Chris Lepore, not only is he a leader, you see him number 26 in your screen, having the nose for the football, tremendous vision, and that's a good open field tackle. Believe me, if he's not there, that is a huge run. Sure is. Opened it up well, BC, two for three on third down this afternoon. Ryan Reed resetting. To go with Washington. And he's got the first down. Let's get downstairs to John Sanders standing by with Brian Broadwater. Brian doing what he can down here because he can't play right now. Fractured larynx. It sounds terrible, but you're thinking you're going to be back before too long, huh? I think so. You know, I went to two doctors last week, and they think uh, they gave me the four to six weeks to start with, and looks like I might be able to back sooner than that. So you know, maybe getting a little action this week, doing a little working out, and uh, uh, doctors make a decision later on about when I'll, I'll be able to come back and play. What are you doing to help Ed this afternoon? I'm just trying to calm him down, you know, keep him in, you know, he's out there playing, but, you know, I, I've seen a little bit too, so I'm trying to keep giving some clues, stuff that the defense is doing, maybe things to help him out, and, uh, you know, just make sure he goes out there the best he can. I'm just trying to do everything I can to help him out, so. All right, thanks, Brian. Back to you, David. John, thank you. Good young man, and I tell you what, his voice sounds a heck of a lot better than I thought it was going to, considering the injury he's had. And we saw the replay yesterday afternoon in Tom O'Brien's office. I've watched car accidents that weren't that violent. <laughs> Boy, that young man got hit three times, boom, 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 from three different angles. And the one thing you better keep in mind, Broadwater did not make the trip with the Naval Academy. He drove up from Annapolis. Folks, that's a good eight hours. Good eight hours. Play action, Hasselbeck throwing to Duane Davis. Nice move. 
Showing some speed. Wheeling down into Navy territory out of bounds at the 38-yard line. First down for Boston College, a 27-yard pickup. Simply too much cushion. If you're the Navy defensive backs, you've, you've almost been put on an island trying to stop the run. It's not good when you're a wide receiver, a defensive back, a wide receiver catches the ball and you're not in the same frame. David Alexander, another one of the defenders for the Naval Academy, not starting this afternoon. You know what? You've got to respect speed, but you've got to be in a position to make tackles. Out of the eye formation. Play action again. Hasselback all day. End zone. Got a man down there. It's the wall. Touchdown, Boston College. 38 yards on the hookup. The Navy defensive staff knew what they were talking about yesterday with Boston College wanting to go deep, do it early, do it often. They were expecting six or seven long passes. DeWalt beats uh, Justin Takasaki. The one thing you've got to be impressed with, not only the fact that they're throwing the ball long, they're completing them. All day provided, that kind of protection provided by the O-line for B.C. Hasselbeck living a charmed existence. Point after is good. And DeWalt, we've chatted him and his maybe willingness, his disinterest in blocking, but he can run and he can catch 24-7. One thing for sure, BC has established that they can flat out outrun Navy and to keep it real simple too. Your guy, my guy, catch me. And you see the numbers for DeWalt, four catches thus far, 101 yards, two touchdowns. Well, look at the bot. last two weeks. <laughs> a lot of people haven't had careers that good. Outstanding. Six play drive, 85 yards. Tell you what, and there's a lot to like about this kicker, although this time Squirtina doesn't get it all the way into the end zone. And now some open field for Jamal. Can he turn to all? Oh, he couldn't. I thought he would continue to try to beat him to the corner. Good return nonetheless by Rashad Jamal. And take another look. 25 yards on that return. And we talked about it earlier with Broadwater being in a car wreck. And there's one thing about it, whether it's a car or whether it's playing football, there's no substitution for speed. DeWalt simply outruns Justin Takasaki. Look at the cushion Takasaki's giving him. He simply runs by him. You know, if you're the defensive coordinator, if you're, if you're Tim DeRuiter, what are you going to do? Tell my kids to run faster because we've got the right coverage called. Got a penalty flag. And uh, appears we're looking at a do-over. Big numbers there. 227 to 17. May need to change his tires. Get him. And that's what happens when you get a quarterback that's had the experience that, that a Tim Hasselback has had. And then Malinowski comes in with his first career start, and now he's put into a 24 to 7 hole. Right. Navy is not a passing football team. You see Tim DeRuiter, the defensive coordinator. He's going to have a tough chore. Number one trying to find a way to match up with Boston College's speed. But secondly, now their offense is going to be put in a different situation. They're going to have to be more in the pass mode and less into the run because time is not their friend. So we'll do it again after the illegal procedure. Call against BC. Let's see. They'll let that go out of bounds. So maybe he's going to get pretty good position here to start this drive. But again, don't turn off your TV sets. We were here two years ago, 18-point BC lead late. Talking to Pete Cronin, your ex-teammate with the Redskins, now doing uh, Boston College Radio. He said, hey, guys, you're down there arranging your social schedules for that night. Next thing you know, Navy comes back and wins the ball game. There is no quit in the Naval Academy. Thank goodness. And you're talking about some, some of the most disciplined young men that you're going to imagine. And Tom O'Brien knows that from being one. And he says, our kids think it's tough during football season when we're taking 14, 15, 16 hours. He said, I can promise you the kids at the Naval Academy taking 18, 19, 20 hours a semester. Right. And the thing at Navy, as uh, Tom was pointing out to us and backed up by the Navy coaches, you don't cut class at Navy. 
you don't cut class. And the other thing is that, you know, there are no scholarships. <laughs> You're playing because you love it. Full day of academics. Scortino, as you would imagine, his leg a little tired. Jamal looking for a crack, finds it to the 42-yard line where he's finally brought down there. On the tackle is Trevor White. 27 yards on the return. It's been all about defense for BC today. And the one thing that they wanted to do was try and find a way to stop the option. They've gotten better. The one thing they're doing, Dave, they're taking their cornerbacks, becoming more physical to the line of scrimmage, and trying to meet the pitch back in the backfield. Well, Frank Spaziani's down one of his key guys, Ryan Burks, in the middle linebacker, right knee sprain. They run right up the middle with Lambert. And Ryan Birch, 6'4", 239, a senior, Lutherville, Maryland, out. And remember, we lost Scott Bradley in the first quarter. So they are in trouble in terms of personnel. Andy Romanowski in there in the middle now. No, re no relation to Bill Romanowski. No, sir. Same, Same school. school. Spelled different, as a matter of fact. Spelling is different. Malinowski pitches to Bach. Blast it down at the 49-yard line. Good tackle by Paul Cook. We've seen him unload a couple of times today. Good look at Paul, number 27. Had some help from Doug Gissett. And if you're Charlie Weatherby in the Navy staff, I think what you look for before the half, let's see if we can't punch it into the end zone again. Make it a 24-14 game. We talked about their 18-point uh, comeback two years ago. There's no quit in this Navy squad, folks. We got J.D. Schmidt playing in the middle in a spot formerly occupied by Birch as Lambert goes up the middle, picks up the first down. Here's your time remaining, coming up on two and a half to go. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, and John Sanders with you. Along with our Big East Caravan, we're in Boston. We'll be here several times in the month of October. Lambert, 11 carries, 34 yards for the fullback. Lambert of Navy. Malinowski, good play as he's stopped by Frank Mizzarelli. And let's go down to John Sanders. Tough enough to defend against this wild offense of Navy. They've lost more on the defensive side of the football for BC because Ryan Birch has a knee sprain. He is out. So that's two linebackers, Jeff, that are down. And it's still a long afternoon remaining for that defense. And the one thing that uh, Tom O'Brien mentioned yesterday, there's only three guys coming back from last year's 99 squad and departed Chris Ovan, starting defensive tackle with the Minnesota Vikings. Frank Chamberlain, a tremendous linebacker for them last season. He made it on an NFL squad. Pedro Serrano had a great career, too, in the secondary. And George White. They lost some, you know, some stellar players. And the one thing he talked about that probably hurt his offense in the opener against West Virginia, their offense was just kicking their defense during the early parts of fall practice, and they were really never tested. They go to Morgantown. West Virginia gets after them early, and they don't respond. And that's not what you like to see as a uh, head coach and a former offensive line, especially a veteran group like your oh, offensive absolutely. line. Absolutely. Glad you're with us here for Big East football. BC stepping out of conference today. A matchup against the Naval Academy here at Alumni Stadium. Parents Day. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostick and John Sanders. Glad you are with us. And we tell you, this is a an explosive uh, series with the visiting team in this series and over the years really having a lot of success. Second down, slightly more than 10. Lambert straight up the middle. Boy, they moved some bodies there. A real nice get acquainted session with the fullback. <laughs> He's grinding it out. Coming up our National Car Rental Halftime Report. Mike Gleason will have it for you. Scores and highlights from all over college football. Under two minutes of play, Ed Malinowski is the quarterback. Football, loose ball. BC's got it. This could be a party here. Frank Misarelli with the return. Frank out of Stanhope, New Jersey, a 6'4 sophomore. So the same, turnover by Navy. The same thing that was the uh, Achilles heel for the Naval Academy last week shows up again 
putting the football on the ground. Number 87, Frank Mizzarelli, able to scoop it up. You're talking about a guy that's got a strong base. If we yeah. can get a shot of his feet, this young man wears a size 18 shoe. Got some big dogs out there. If he grows into those feet, can we say seven foot five? <laughs> There's a large individual. That's when defensive linemen appreciate running backs. When they pick the ball up and get hit. Frank, advance the ball 15 yards. They're going to go for a kill right here. They go to Josh Servey, 6'4 junior from Valrico, Florida. Had a chance to meet his dad, John, while we were at the National Car Rental spot here at Logan Airport yesterday. Got to protect the ball. You got to value the ball, and that would... Be one of the many things that I'm sure Charlie Weatherby will talk about when he gets his club in the locker room. And the other thing that has to be addressed, how do we slow down, not stop, how do we slow down the BC offense? Yeah. But 22 to go. Charlie Weatherby also has got to find a way to stop number 11. You don't have to know his name, but we'll tell you it's Dedrick DeWall. It's a guy that's running real fast and free in the secondary of Navy. Four catches, two touchdowns, over 100 yards in the first half. And the one thing that they're going to have to do, they're going to have to take some chances defensively. Tim DeRuiter, the Navy uh, defensive coordinator, you're going to have to start pulling some of the plugs, and you're going to have to try and put pressure on quarterbacks. If you allow Hasselback to stand in the pocket all afternoon, the way his offensive line has protected him, you know what? Otis Sistrunk was born. The doctor came out and told her, you know, told the dad, you know what, sir? So I got good news and bad news. The good news is that you're, you're the father of a healthy baby boy. He says the bad thing is this could get ugly. <laughs> yeah, and it did. And then you had to face. Did you face up against him? Look at this. I played against Manny. I played against Manny's his brother, sister. Manny's sister. Manny was quite a piece of work also. I'll tell you what, those are two impact players in the NFL back in the day. Manny had some huge forearms. <laughs> I got a couple of them on my head. I was going to say, probably tasting a little bit of that. Quick drop, slant, Ryan Reed. How pumped is he to make this catch? But a penalty flag is going to bring it back. Quick slant, Ryan Reed. And we've got an injured Navy player there, outstanding linebacker, Jake Bowen, but more importantly, a penalty flag. Set a chop block. 15-yard pickup. They're going to bring this one back. And I think the chop block was on number one, Jake Bowen. Hence his limping. And I think it was delivered by Paul Zakaskis, the uh, big right guard. Chop block on the offense. 15 yards. Still second down. Jeff, you made an observation, I don't know, last week, week before last, that that is the greatest rule on the books in, in football. Uh, right that uh, not allowing offensive linemen to cut people that are engaged that is it there have been more guys that have blown out knees have not been able to finish their career oh right there you see it and the one thing as an offensive lineman a former offensive lineman you know you want to do whatever you can to get your man down and you will but we're not we're not trying to maim anybody second down long 19 yards hassle back Aaron out again. He's got the wall again. Downfield. He made the catch. Six-yard line. First and goal, Boston College. There is no way that that is a reception. The field judge was simply not in position to see it. The ball was out on the field. And the person that knows it more than anybody is the wall. I'll be two yards if it stands. I'll be shocked if they rule this as a reception. Penalty flag back up field. And this officiating crew is having a bad day. Mm-hmm. They were pretty chipper this morning. Yeah, it's easier when you're standing in front of the hotel <laughs> as opposed to standing in front of 44,000 people. Good call. It's not a popular call here at Alumni Stadium, but it's a correct call. Now Tom O'Brien, you know what? Let's take another look. The officials are like, uh, you know, we can please some of the people some of the time. Watch There's the bottom the of your ball. screen. There's the ball. It is laying on the ground right there. Good call by the officials. We have a sideline warning on the Navy bench. That's number one. Watch the ground right there. Did not have it. Good call. DeWalt, you know, he did a good job of acting. Yes, he did. Sell and it. And you heard about the sideline warning. 
Charlie Weatherby and his staff had a great view at what was happening on that play. Charlie was going to go out on the hash hey. marks and make the call himself. Hey. And let me tell you something. He already, DeWalt's already killing him on the passing game. He beat him on a punt return about 35 yards where Charlie thought that DeWalt had signaled for a fair catch. So he does not want to see any more from number 11. Here. And you look at Charlie, and he's in very good shape. I can see why. Yeah, Just during the course of a game, he must lose 10 pounds. Third down and 19. Hasselbeck under some pressure. Throwing on the run. Serving. Taken out of bounds at about the 42-yard line by Jake Bowen. Now if you're the Naval Academy, we talked about your bag of tricks. Boston College is going to face about a fourth and 15. I come after their putter. Why not? With 54 seconds left on the clock. Kevin McMyler, sophomore out of Dallas. Averaging just under 41 yards per punt. This will be his first of the day. Another kicker with two colored shoes. Jeff Bostic, we want an investigation. McMyler. He's going for the corner. No, sir. Right down the middle at the 15-yard line. Maybe a face mask there. Game tackled at the 15. On the return by Billy Hubbard. No flags. And Billy Hubbard, an interesting story at the Naval Academy, punt returner. He broke the school record with 35 returns last season. Only two fair catches. He I is salute not, him. He is not going to call the fair catch. From the Phil McConkie School of punt returners. You know, you talk about all different breeds of animal. Punt returners are insane. No question. And if you don't believe it, go out in your backyard and try it with 11 of your closest friends. Full speed, aiming at you. Not a good way to. That's not my idea of a fun Saturday afternoon. Malinowski outside completion. He's got it to Brandon Rampani. His first catch this afternoon. Rampani out of San Antonio, Texas, Churchill High School. Tough chore to try and get in scoring range. Naval Academy with only one timeout remaining. Clock is certainly not in their favor with the type of offense that they run. I think we've got another flag on the field, Dave. Believe it or not. Robbie Day. I'm beginning to wonder which team has huddled more, the BC offense, the Navy defense, or this referee. Well, the officiating crew certainly the officiating crew has been there a lot. They're in the scorebook. There's no question about that. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Tack on 15 yards to the end of the play. First down. Hmm. And this has been one of the Achilles heels of Boston College early in the 2000 season. Gotcha. A lot of penalties. Penalties have been a problem for this football team. We talked about maybe not being able to get in scoring range. Well, they're going to be able to if Boston College allows 15-yard penalties to happen. Something Tom O'Brien is not having pen been penalized, Jeff, 19 times for buck 23. Today, 6 for 88. The three games, they have 25 penalties already. 37 seconds to go. A little bit more playing room for... Malinowski throws Rampani. That'll work again. First down, Navy. And it stops the clock. At some point now. Well, out and up. Deep post here. See, I would think that a, a guy like Malinowski, you're asking a lot of a quarterback that has not played the position except this fall. Remember last spring, he was a safety. Brian Madden goes down in the spring game. He may get back this season. So he wasn't even taking snaps. And, and Weatherby said one thing yesterday. This young man was about 210 pounds. He's lost about 20 pounds to play quarterback. See if he's got any long-range missiles left in him. Fumble recovered by Lambert. Here's where you need to use your last time out. Sure enough. It'll be a second down play as we approach 20 seconds to go in the first half. They're letting the clock run. I can't believe this. Me either. Taking a lot of time. They've wasted about 14, 15 seconds. 10 seconds. He's under. He's in single digits now. He needs to throw it deep. Sideline ball in. Penny has it. Drops it. Two seconds to go. This is one of the things of having an inexperienced quarterback. And we talked to uh, Charlie Weatherby in the lobby yesterday. He said that his team runs the two-minute drill at least 30 minutes per week. You bet. There's nothing to duplicate game conditions. And I asked him one thing. Will you allow Malinowski to call his own plays? That's always a big bonus for the quarterback. 
He says, no, we will signal him in. And that's where you saw the time delay. That's right. Two seconds to go. How far can you throw Ed Malinowski? From the 49 of BC, corner blitz, step throw, it's up in the air. Ordway's there, he's the one that was closest to it. To end the half, and guess what, we've got another flag. And I think this one's gonna be a chop block also. Joseph Ryder probably done more talking than he thought he was going to do. Illegal participation. This field. 12 men on the offense. Penalty is declined. The half is ended. They tend not to look favorably on having an extra man on the field. Charlie Weatherby and his staff will have to collect. And you know what? The one thing we can count on, this team will be back in the second half. Have to find a way to slow down the BC offense. If you're Tom O'Brien, you've got to be pleased with the way you played. There's one thing I would address at halftime the penalty situation. That creeps in and becomes a problem throughout the year. First half in the books, folks. 24-7, Boston College. That was Jamal's 12-yard run to get Navy on the board, but it's been a lot of DeWalt. A couple of touchdowns today for the Boston College Eagles. From the start of the second half here at Chestnut Hill, Mass, 24-7. BC Eagles lead the Navy Midshipmen. Navy's eight and five all time here in Boston College territory. Take a look at the first half statistics. Passing yardage, no contest, 240 to 39, even though Navy with a almost at five uh, minutes more in time of possession, but a better job on third down conversions. Get down to the sidelines minutes ago. John Sanders spoke with BC coach Tom O'Brien. Coach, your, your thoughts on the first half of play? Well, you know, we had our opportunities. We, we converted some of them, but we got down there twice and didn't score when we had opportunities. That's just served me on offense. Defensively, we missed some of our assignments and some of our keys. We got to make sure we're precise and, and who's got the quarterback, who's got the pitch, and if we do that, then I think we'll be better this half. A few more penalties in the first half than you wanted, obviously. Yeah, that's not good, but, you know, it's over with. Now we got to get better this half. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank you. All right, John, thank you very much. Tom, thank you. I think about Tom O'Brien's going to be direct, right to the point. And so is this guy. Talk about being direct to the point. Look at that, 12 of 14, 240. Two touches and a pick, and it helps when you get your favorite receiver basically running free, roaming wide. You see Charlie Weatherby. I'll guarantee you from, from knowing this man the way that I do. He will have a plan in the second half. You know what? If you have to roll over and double team to walk, <laughs> that's right. You know, let someone else beat you. Absolutely. I think the point, the point has been made. Four you know catches, one on one. That's like when the kid's, you know, going around and he's young and he's experimenting and he touches the oven. He finds out that that thing's hot. That's it. Well, guess what? I bet he won't do it again. Well, maybe we'll be kicking off. David Hill's getting it teed up. Washington on the left, Green on the right. There we go. Green at the 11. Not much of a hole, outstanding tackle. Down there by number nine of Navy. Went down and broke through the wedge. A free safety, a backup free safety, Matt Brooks, a junior from Laguna Nigel, Nigel, California. And if you're Navy, it starts on this series. The one thing they need, they need the people to stand up. And a guy that really has surprised me, Shaka Martin, number 52, a guy that to me is probably the best athlete defensively, really haven't called his name. You look to the guys like Bowen, Wimsat, we haven't called his name. That is correct. Got to get it outside. Washington turns the corner. Penalty flag follows him. Wimsat there, number 94, to help run him out of bounds. And uh, the aforementioned Shaka Martin. And I'd be willing to bet we're going to have a holding call on mm -hmm. number 48, Ryan Utzler. The uh, fullback looked like he had a handful of jersey. Let's see if I'm right. Holding on the offense. Ten yards to spot the foul. Repeat first down. I think that's a pretty good bet. Take a look. Let's see who 
pick one. Well, there's a couple of them to oh, choose yeah. from. The 75. 75. Mark first. Colombo <laughs> has got a hit. No wonder Shaka Martin's not making any plays. <laughs> that was a mobile choice if there ever was one. DeWalt in motion. Draw straight up the middle with Washington. Good tackle there by number seven, Dewan Cromer out of Dallas, Texas. If you're Tim DeRuder, the Navy defensive coordinator, nothing can start your second half any better than a big 10-yard penalty. Hold them, get three and out, and give your offense some, some good field position. Sure enough. And one thing for Navy we've learned, a 17-point lead is not safe. Not even concerned. They just need a couple of stops here. They can use one here on the second down and long. Hasselback is hit by hot hand all day. Looks left, throws left, and he's got his receiver, Burke. Jamal Burke with the catch. Got a Brockton Mass. Caught 11 catches a year ago for 250 yards and two scores. Picks up 14 there. And he's about a yard short of a first down. And there's one thing you cannot coach, and that's speed. And that's one thing that Navy can't match up with the Boston College offense right now. The Boston College receivers are simply too fast. Burke. Reed DeWalt Daniels up the middle with number one William Green for the first down across the 35. Interesting talking to Charlie Weatherby yesterday about where he puts people on his football squad. He said normally we find linebackers that if they're not able to run well, well, we'll put them in the defensive line. Look at the two nose guards, Andy Zett. You know, it's six foot one, 242 pounds playing nose tackle. Unbelievable. Washington to the edge, turns the corner, out of bounds at about the 43-yard line, right into the Navy bench. Run out of bounds by Dwan Cromer. We have some help from Chris Lepore. Boy, Washington does have some wheels, but Green is faster. And a lot of people here at Chestnut Hill are thinking that maybe William Green should be in the lineup more than a guy like Cedric Washington. One thing I can tell you from a guy like Tom O'Brien, he is a guy that is a loyalist. Washington has been in the program. He's a senior, rushed for almost uh, 1150 last year. He's going to get his chance. Bootleg action. They get it out to DeWalt again. Cromer will not let him proceed any further. Loses his hat. No, that was uh, DeWalt that lost his hat. But it's good for first down for Boston College. Let's go down to John Sanders. A couple more losses on the offensive side of the football for BC. Mike Guazzo, the tight end, is not coming back in the second half because he's got a problem with the calf. And a shoulder strain for Camilla. He is not going to play at all in the second half. As far as that wrap on the leg of uh, the quarterback, Hasselbeck, is concerned, nobody knows. He did it himself. He wrapped it up himself. He's having a problem. He won't let the trainers mess with him. All right, John, thank you very much. Boy, I tell you what, taking its toll in the home opener for BC. Got a blitz. It's picked up. Hasselbeck throws through the hands of Reed. Ryan Reed, former midshipman. Star in the game when they played it here two years ago. Can't come up with the catch. Right there's what you need. If you're the defensive back, get in his face. Good job of running the route. Normally a sure-handed receiver, and you know if he's facing his old team, he wants to play well this afternoon. Yeah, David Alexander on the coverage for Navy. Second down and ten at midfield for BC. Option, pitch it back, Washington. Ooh, boy, did he run through the DB there. Marcus Jackson. Oh, my goodness, he got tattooed. Get the license plate number. And you see Cedric Washington looking to his right. These are the type of runs that running backs like to see on the replay screen. They list him at 203 pounds. Believe me, it's more like 230 right here. Runs through the arm tackle of Marcus Jackson. Watch him. He feels good about himself. And see what it does to his teammates? Everybody's oh, yeah. over there is, is, is jacked about it. How could you not be? Boy, if you're DB, Marcus is going to want to close a little bit better next time. First down for BC. Washington again. Nice cutback. He did well to get his four yards to the 35-yard line. Pretty decent block by Mike Cook, the left tackle. And we haven't talked about this offensive line. Cook, LeCare, Coppin. Zukaskis, Colombo, tremendous protection. You know, you wonder why your quarterback has success throwing the football. Why DeWalt's having a big afternoon. Starts up front, folks. 
good size offensive line, 6'5", 6'3", 6'3", 6'6", and 6'8", in terms of height, and they average about 300 pounds. It's been a good place for old linemen here in the last seven, eight, maybe 10 years. Second down play, play action, blitz, they beat it. They throw it to number 48, that's Ryan Utzler. And Utzler takes it down to the 27-yard line. And that's good for another first down for Boston College. We talked about the offensive line in the open. Yep, they're huge. Six foot five, 303 pound average. And when you look across the field, the Naval Academy's front three go respectively 270, 242, 253. You know what? A small man will put up a large war, but at the end, the big man will win. Give me that 18 wheeler. Throw outside the wall. Draws a crowd, doesn't take too much punishment. Quick feet. Darrell Hill, number 55, got an ankle and held on. And you wonder why a guy like Hasselbeck would put that little wrap on and not let the trainers look at his name. Hey, man, I'm not coming out. <laughs> He's not coming out. You have to like his decision process. What a different quarterback that we saw last year. Much more mature, knows the offense much better. And I guarantee you one thing that's helped him, his brother. This leaves running room for Washington. Beautifully done, followed his blockers. Made something happen. He's got a first down to the 14-yard line. First and goal, Boston College. Running Good. left side again with LeCare and Cook and Ryan Utzler. Good job. Kudos to that left side. Watch the removal. Watch the removal. Down block by your tight end. You got your two big guys out front. Utzler, your fullback. Get up in there and make a – there you go. Make a hit. Good job by the left side getting a push up field. Well, Weatherby said he doesn't want to see D lineman on roller skates going backwards. Washington, a tough run, came up and dragged Chris Laporte. Washington absorbed the blow and then got another three, four yards. That's some positive running right there when you can pop a guy and continue to go. If you're Navy, you're thinking one thing. Keep them out of the end zone. Secondly, you're thinking turnover. A turnover is about the best thing that can happen in Navy right now. Washington to the five. Keeps the play alive. And good job by Navy. Oh, what was that? Number 52, that's Martin. Good tackle. 6'2", 233, a junior out of Danville, Virginia. And it looked like Washington did a little extracurricular at yeah, the end of the did. play, a little walking on and kicking, and that's what I thought. Watch the end of the play. Martin did a good job of standing him up, and you know what? Could have put him on the turf. See yeah, right there, kicking him? Look, was... kicking him in the head right there? That was unnecessary. Washington with 53 yards on this drive alone. Same oh, kicking right an... there? Oh, absolutely. Washington, left side, get room. Laporte close. And denies him a first down. Chris Lepore lost his helmet. More importantly, made the play. Got a penalty flag near the closer to the Navy sideline. An illegal procedure on Boston College. So we're approaching nine minutes to go. BC had a lot of penalties today. I need to step down on the field and talk to Joseph Ryder. <laughs> the head referee, I'm I telling you. I tell you him. what, after you planted that seed in his head, he's probably probably uh, aware that, geez, I am, uh, we are calling a lot of plays here. Maybe you're surely moving back. Talking to Brad Wimsett. And he's a young man, we haven't mentioned his name, one of the senior co-captains. Asked Charlie Weatherby yesterday, how is he playing? Illegal formation on the offense, less than seven on the line. Penalty is declined, third down. So third down, all right, they're going to take the shot here. 
try to get out of here with if they get a break hold them to a field goal or if they get lucky maybe they can totally stop them third down and short about third and two and a debate broke out you know what don't you feel smarter when you come to chestnut hills you know, you leave Logan. That's what I thought. I was. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking. I said, I knew that that was third down before. Or well, why would they take the uh, penalty and, and decline it? The other thing, I said, you feel smarter. You leave Logan Airport. You drive past Harvard. You drive past MIT, and then you come to Boston College, which is a tremendous uh, academic institution. Try to breathe the air, right? Try to get to take some. Oh yeah, I feel much there. smarter. They went hard for the block. But the 24-yard field goal is good by Mike Sutton. To tack another three on the board, 27 to seven, Boston College. It is Parents Day. Evidently, their parents are not here <laughs> seeing this performance. But we'll do our best with our pictures to send these postcards back home. The super fan, little body surfing here, huh? I told you I felt a little bit smarter. Yeah, when I came you, want, you want to retract that? You know, it's a big campus. <laughs> it's a big campus. <laughs> There's no five beta campus in that crowd. <laughs> I'm sure the priest would agree with you on that one too. Here's Jamal. Got room. Pretty good block. Good. Holly lost the ball. Back the other way comes Boston College. Out of bounds, and the Eagles have regained possession. Lenny Walls, the six foot four cornerback whose brother Kenny is an outstanding player here on the BC basketball team, came up with the loose ball. And a 30 yards of, uh, on the return before the fumble. And I think the penalty is going to be on the Naval Academy. Well, if that is, that is going to be as demoralizing a blow and emotional change as we've seen all day. Nobody feels worse than the guy that fumbles the football. On the return team, penalty is declined. Fumble is recovered by Boston College. First down. Good shot, Jamal had a nice looking return, but he got to put the ball away. Four Navy fumbles, two recovered by BC. And a good job of the defender with BC stripping the football. It looked like number 33. Say it's not so. Gortino, the kicker. How about that? Is that the kicker that stripped you the owe football? Him. You owe him. You know him. what? Jeff Boston. I am goes. on my knees right now <laughs> because I'm not worthy. <laughs> you the owe kicker him. stripping the football. Imagine that. Save that play. Rugby. That's right. Exactly. Nicely done on that catch. Tell you what. Hasselbeck throwing some nice passes today. This one to Dewan Daniels. Ladies and gentlemen, let's mark this moment right now. 221 Eastern Time. I'm apologizing to a kicker. <laughs> but you know what? He put his head in there, didn't he? That's a nice play. Do one thing. Get two shoes that are the same color. We see the same problem that hurt this team last week. At Georgia Tech, six fumbles this, this week, four of them. BC looking for a kill right now. 27-7, approaching eight to go. Play action. It's there. End zone for Reed. Oh, that would have been too sweet. Let's go down to Mike Gleason, AT&T Studios, for an update. East Carolina, Syracuse. Well, Simsy, East Carolina led 24-10 at the half. Syracuse opens up the second half. D. Brown, three yards out. Caps off a 73-yard drive. And that opened up the second half for the Orange Men. Made it 24-17. That's where they stand. 7-20 to go. Quarter number three. The Big Ten up in Madison. Both Northwestern and Wisconsin finding the end zone in the third quarter. Now it's 23-14. Badgers looking for their 12th straight. Let's go back to Chestnut Hill. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Green straight up the middle. Can anybody stop him? To the 15-yard line. That's a first down for Boston College. And you saw Dee Brown scoring for Syracuse. I like that little guy. Seems like he's been at BC forever, four-year starter. I mean, at Syracuse forever, but a good player up at Syracuse. And I'll tell you, guy, you better remember here at Boston College, number one, Mr. Green. You know what? And I've not understood this. The new style with the running backs and some of these kids, those high top shoes with those little ankle socks. I don't yeah. understand that, especially it's, playing on AstroTurf. It's a stylistic thing. Green. Oh, that's a good defensive play. Penalty flag on play as well. But some good speed by Andy Zetz, the nose guard, a converted linebacker. And a 4-8 speed. And imagine another flag on the field. 
They're going to paint this field yellow after the game, I'm sure. But I tell you what, if we make the right calls and get your wife, my wife, we could, uh, yeah, they could uh, mail up uh, some lunch here or some dinner. I've got a 5 o'clock flight. What do you <laughs> had? <laughs> Boy, I love the Boston area, especially Logan Airport. You had. Holding, holding on the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Tom will not be taking that act on stand-up patrol, that's for sure. He will not be doing any of the comedy clubs the way he's feeling right now. And that's the one thing he talked about yesterday when he talked about the 98 game that Navy played here. Mm -hmm. Came back and won 32-31. He said, we had the game won and didn't take care of the details. And that's what you talk about with penalties. Nine penalties, 93 yards against BC. Hasselbeck flushed. He wants to walk the move. Open area, Lepore broke it off. Good recovery by Chris Lepore because that was a six spot for sure for BC. One thing you do like from the Boston College offense, Dana Bible still willing to take his shots downfield and really load up for the home run. DeWald is running a, a post pattern. Pretty good coverage right there by David Anderson. Look at the closing speed by number 26, Lepore. Big quarterback rolling to his right, throwing on the move. Pretty good touch, young man. The NFL will see another hassle back at quarterback. Bank on it. Reed tap of your screen, the ex-Navy man. Looking in his direction, flying sideline. He's there. He couldn't make the catch. He drew a double team from Marcus Jackson along with Lepore, who goes, goes over and exchanges maybe some unpleasantries. You left this, we got something for you. Another good throw by Hasselbeck. It wasn't a completed pass. Tremendous cover and closing speed by Laporte to knock the ball out of his hands. And for the first time this afternoon, maybe, just maybe, Mr. Hasselbeck got, you know, it's the first time he's been on the ground. I know. BC, five for eight, third down opportunities today. Much better percentage than Navy. Quick drop, slant, three. Oh, should have been picked. Linebacker had his opportunity right there. I don't understand that play selection when you're looking at a third down and 20 yards. You can run a slant. That's one thing. If you've got man coverage. If you're running it into a zone, there's a safety sitting there waiting on you. Ryan Hamilton, number 58, had a shot. You saw a picture of Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator. Going to bring on the punt team. I am really surprised that they're, they're opting to go for a punt. This yep. would be about a 43-yard field goal. What is does that, that tell you about your kicker? Is there an O'Brien uh, bag of tricks here? Little pooch. Got way too much of it, as a matter of fact. And as you can tell, a real popular call here in Boston. Take a timeout. Come back to Chestnut Hill, Mass, Boston College. Nevertheless, 27-7 on top of Navy. 7-1 to go, third period. Navy could use some offense here to get back into this game, trailing 27-7. to seven. Time of possession this half. Navy, what's this, the first play of the second half. And another penalty flag as Rashad Jamal makes the carry around the right side. BC's had the ball 7.59 to Navy just getting started. Don't forget the last time. This is a hold on Navy. And let's get on to John Sanders. It is a new millennium, a new look to Boston College. Gene DiFilippo, who is the director of athletics here, joins me. You've changed the logos a little bit after a lot of research. It's a nice look. We have. Thank you. You know, we have a lot of tradition with the interlock and BC logo. So we just enhanced that a little bit. But we did add a new word mark and revamp the eagle a little bit. And uh, we have now Boston College with a revamped eagle, and we're really excited about it. Stay with us. We want to talk a little bit about some upgrading and facilities, too. David? All right. Thank you, John. Be back to you and Gene in a moment. Great facility here, indeed. Here's Malin Malinowski outside the hot runner. Is this man, Jamal, but he takes a pounding after a short game. Let's get back to John. 
All right, thank you very much, Gene. Let's talk about the upgrading of the facilities. This is a beautiful place you've got here, but you're making it better, right? Well, thank you. You know, we did something really unique on the field. Um, what we do is, in late November, we put up a bubble over the plan surface. It's about 120 yards long and 65 yards wide, and it serves as an indoor facility for all of our teams during the inclement weather. It's been a great idea. We learned about the idea from the University of Illinois, and it's been terrific for all our teams. All right, thanks, thank you. And another carry by the quarterback, Malinowski. Got hit by Sean Guthrie, number 99, junior out of Miami, Florida. Just under six minutes to play. This is Big East football from Alumni Stadium here at Chestnut Hill, Mass. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostick and John Sanders and our Big East crew. Interesting development here is Navy just now getting the ball first time in the uh, second half. Maybe three of uh, ten. First time running from scrimmage. Malinowski, tough kid, but four tough yards as he had a flyer down the left sideline, Billy Hubbard, but it was well covered by Jonathan Ordway. And again, let's reset the fact that Malinowski is the third quarterback for Navy. Brian Madden hurt final plays of uh, spring ball. Brian Broadwater hurt in the next to last play. Last was a week. very freak injury. Sure enough. I have very <clears throat> seldom heard of a fractured larynx. Fourth punt by Navy. And a good one by Brian Williams. Fair catch signaled and made at the 35-yard line. No flags, folks. No flags. Yippee. Take a break. Get back to 27-7 after that 39-yard punt by Navy. Good luck at downtown Boston. View from across the Charles River. Beautiful section here in the Hub City. And this is a beautiful city for those who've never been here. Oh, it's gorgeous, no question about it. Tra about traffic, it. now that's another word. That's a whole nother thing. That's a totally different discussion as Daniels gets drilled into the sideline by David Alexander. In completion, take a look now at the Volkswagen. Big East leaders. Clinton Portis at that Miami ball club, if you haven't seen them, <laughs> they've got some running backs down there. Santana Moss has not touched the ball a heck of a lot. I'd like to get him the ball a little bit more. Avon Coburn of West Virginia, D. Brown, Syracuse. And West Virginia off to a tremendous start here in the year 2000. Okay. Second down, Washington. Good job by Navy to hold him to about two yards on that play. And what a block by the right guard, Zukaskis. On number 58, Ryan Hamilton, the inside linebacker. And that's what happens when you take a 306-pound offensive lineman and block him on a 225-pound guard. Zukaskis, we talked about the experience, 20 straight, 26 straight starts. Folks, you're going to see him on Sunday next year also. Had some good ones here. Remember when we were here, what, two years ago, you loved Damian Woody after first series. And I'll tell you what, he hasn't disappointed anybody with a page. You got that right. Sideline ball. Reed is there, makes the catch. First down, Ryan Reed to the 22-yard line for Boston College. His day's made, huh? Look at that. Takes a shot from his ex-teammates. Matt Brooks gets a shot on him as he's uh, coming off the field. 40-yard pickup. Anytime you play against a team that you were once a member of, you want to do well. You don't want to stick it in their face, but you want to perform well. That's a tough catch. It sure was. Matt Brooks covering. Twenty-point lead. BC going for more. Three plays in a row without a flag. Washington straight up the gut. Close to a first down. Boy, he had so many different uh, directions to choose from. That hole was so big. Tackle by Chris Lepore. BC has uh, suffered some injuries today. They're wrapped there. They lost Ryan Birch, Scott Bradley, the two starting linebackers. They lost the tight end. They lost the fullback, Camello. And they're going to need all the defenders they can muster. Uh, you know, one thing about Navy, 
This game will end at some point. Guess who they've got next week? How about Virginia Tech? Oh, Last oh. time I checked, we need some defenders to uh, try and stop number seven, and it's not going to be Hasselbeck. It'll be Michael Vick. That's it. Another big game for Washington, just straight up the gut. Is that you guys in linemen like to say rolling downhill as Washington goes over 100 yards? 102. Pounding right now, 447. Keeping it simple. They hand to Washington. He's in. Touchdown, Boston College. You got the two by four. Use it. That's what BC's doing with their running game. If you're Cedric Washington, you're going to take this big offensive line out to dinner somewhere. You better. And this is what happens when you get a big physical offensive line that has been that has been challenged by their head coach after the opening week performance against West Virginia. They know they're much more talented than what they played at Morgantown. They're taking it out on Navy this afternoon. Sutton for the point after Hasselbeck holds. And it's good. So his parents day crowd here for the home opener of the 2000 season for BC. He's Mr. Washington, seventh career 100 yard game. This touchdown really easy, his second of the season. Good job of blocking. Hutzler with the block downfield. The one thing you like about Cedric Washington, he gains the tough yards. You know, a lot of guys can run when they open field if there's a big, huge hole. But when he gets into the hole, the one thing you see, pad level, legs moving. Second TD of the season for Washington. We will be taking a couple of weeks off here on the Big East Network, but we'll be back with you on October 14th at noon for the first of five consecutive weeks of Big East football action. Check your local listings for our matchup and get ready to follow all the action down the stretch in this 2000 season. The Big East game of the week on October 14th. Interesting that Lee Corso, in the game that was postponed, Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech, said that Vautech would not be able to play for a national championship. I wonder if he'd like to take those words back. The last time I checked, Virginia Tech was ranked fourth in the nation. You Looking bet. at their schedule, I don't know that anybody on their schedule can beat them. Yeah, it's going to be a tough chore for a lot of folks. A lot of people believe, and I, I certainly I do. Miami certainly going to give them a heck of a run. From about the six-yard line, down goes the Navy ball carrier, number 40, Jeff Gaddon, his first time on the return. Knocked down by Josh Ott. Gaddy, a junior from Davidson, North Carolina. Well, this series has been marked by a lot of high scoring, but close games. This one, high scoring, but it's only on one side of the ball right now, BC. That last possession, a minute 44 to go six plays, 65 yards. Josh Bach, haven't seen him in a while. Good closing speed by Ramon Johnson. Penalty flag on the play. The run by Bach close to first down yardage. We've got a holding penalty on the Naval Academy. The guilty party will be number 39, Donnie Fricks. We talked about their prowess at blocking downfield. Sometimes we get our hands engulfed in the other person a little bit more than we should. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still first. Right there, number 39, trying yeah, to grab. Second grab, yeah, tried to grab. He did grab some ankle. I don't know as much if it was holding or it looked as if it were holding. You know, sometimes the appearance of holding will make the officials call it holding. <laughs> and sometimes when you're actually not holding, you'll get called for holding. Keep moonwalking. Reverse. Bach. They were expecting it. Smothered. They're going to try to throw it to uh, Malinowski, who's running down the left sideline. The quarterback. But Bach never had a chance. Never had a chance. Doug Goodwin made sure of that. Number 61 freshman from Freeport, New York. And Doug Goodwin is a guy that Tom O'Brien said, this kid's going to be a player, true freshman. 
making the tackle in the backfield. And this is what BC did not do in 1998. They're taking care of business. They got a big lead. They're driving it home. Third and almost forever here as they run the draw. Flip job on Lambert. Tackle made by Willie Poole from St. Albans, New York. But to Christ the King High School, produced some basketball players out of there like Lamar Odom, now with the LA Clippers. Oh, Mr. Lambert will fill that in the morning. I know he's young. He yeah. will fill that in the morning. No doubt about it. You know, people think that AstroTurf is nice and spongy. No, 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 no. Let me tell you what it's... <laughs> underneath, there's asphalt, folks. <laughs> Malinowski, throw it outside. Receiver did a heck of a job. Dominic, Dominic Bailey get his hands on it, regain his balance, but it's going to be well short of first down yardage. And what you've seen this afternoon, Dave, you've had an offense with a very experienced quarterback and a very big offensive line. On the flip side for the Naval Academy, you've had a fairly big offensive line that's done a decent job running the football, but a quarterback that simply hasn't been given the time to mature and really get all the aspects of the game down. Fifth punt by Navy today, and if you know about Brian Broadwater, it shows you how valuable he is. This is a good-looking punt. Back to the 29-yard line. Good job by Brian Williams, the fair catch by DeWalt. 47 yards on the punt. So with a 34-7 lead for Boston College, curious to see what Tom, Tom O'Brien does in terms of his personnel. One of the things we keyed on coming into today's game, the running attack by Boston College. And you see some impressive statistics put up by the Eagles. And I thought really green would be a, a bigger factor in this game. The game's not over. But I, I thought he'd be a much more dynamic force in the game. Well, as you speak, he is in there as the deep back and gets the call straight up the middle. They have found something. Just running straight ahead. It was like the old Inga Mario Hansen line. I see something. I see something. And I know as a former offensive lineman, there's one thing about football. If you're the biggest, most physical person on the field or that group, and you can control that line of scrimmage. Football's fun. Aaron Lowe, there's no question about that. Nothing fancy about this. But it's a good thing to beat Alexander and Jake Bowen are strong because Green was going to try to take that one to the house from about 60 yards. And I'm really surprised that uh, Tom O'Brien has got the majority of his starting offensive line still in the game. With the number of injuries that have taken place, particularly on the defensive side of the ball, you would think, you know, get the guys out of there. Make sure that they're healthy for Virginia Tech next week. Yes. Spend some time in the fourth quarter talking about how BC matches up with Virginia Tech. Three quarters in the book. 34 to 7. And this one turned it around. The first time BC touched the ball, they converted it with a touchdown from Washington. 34 to 7 on a big hitting day for BC. Fierce looking eagle, which symbolizes the athletic teams here at Boston College. Welcome back, everybody. Start of the fourth quarter. It's 34 7. Boston College on top of Navy. BC's rolled up nine first downs in third quarter to none as Juan Daniels running free. 32 yard line, first down, Boston College. Good misdirection by Hasselbeck as Clyde Clark, a backup strong safety, had to come back to make the tackle. And Juan Daniels is a 2000 outstanding male scholar athlete. It's the second time he's won this award. Understand one thing, there are 33 different NCAA Division I sports that are played here at BC. For this young man to win that award twice may say speaks volumes of his character, his athleticism, and more importantly, college day academics. 25-yard mm -hmm. pickup. Here's Green on the edge. Two men to beat. He beats it. Smoked it. Runs over a third. First down, Boston College. That's a good-looking play. You get an overmatch skill-wise. Green 6'1", 216 from Atlantic City. 
with the Holy Spirit High School is just a sophomore. And tremendous pass protection. It's happened all afternoon. Navy skill guys simply can't match up on the edge with the type of speed that BC presents. It's almost getting to the point now where it's illegal that they're so fast. Look at a blocking. Look at a road. Green into the secondary. To the five. To the three-yard line. First and goal, Boston College. Boy, Ryan Hutzler. You talk about a road grader. A lot of help running left side. Cook, LeCare, and that, that bunch. A lot of Big space. Big block by number 62, John Richardson, a backup left guard. Backside block by Zukowskis as well. And, you know, this is what we expected with this young man. You know, big guy, 215 pounds with breakaway speed. William Green, remember that name. Eight carries, 50 yards. Green, the carry. Green, the touchdown. Green opened the scoring, and I think it's a pretty safe bet that that might be the last time we see him this afternoon. And this was an extremely late flag. The big right guard, Paul Zukaskis, after the touchdown, was literally dragging the linebacker, Daryl Hill, along the turf for about five yards. It's going to be a personal foul. We have a touchdown. We have a dead ball, personal foul on the offense. They administered on the try, 15 yards. And I don't know what got into Zukaskis, but he was literally dragging Daryl Hill across the ground for about five yards. Long afternoon for Charlie Weatherby and the midshipmen from Navy. They were well aware that this was a possible occurrence here this afternoon. It's been a long afternoon for this officiating crew also. Jack's going to be out of breath. Check that Joseph rider. I'm going to catch a ride with him to the airport. <laughs> yeah. If that ever going, happens. So you'll be getting an 8 o'clock flight, so I could walk, right? <laughs> Here's the uh, point after by Sutphin from the 25-yard line. Does he have enough? He does. 41-7, to seven. and Tom O'Brien not worrying about losing to his alma mater today. Look at his fabulous blocking and running by B.C. The route is on. Well, William Green, a one-yard run and a three-yard run to his credit today, part of this 41-7 to seven B.C. lead over Navy. Long afternoon for the midshipmen. One guy in particular, I fear Brian Broadwater, is a terrific quarterback for him. He's got to be as downcast as anybody, knowing how much that he could help and how well he played two years ago. Had a celebrity on, on campus last night. We're not talking about Jeff Bostick. Let's go down to John Sanders. Dave, it was a special night. This is Parents Weekend, and there was a special concert right here at Conti Forum last night. It featured a guy who 20 years ago became director of the Boston Pops. His name is John Williams. He's known all over the world for his fantastic music. He has produced music for over 80 movies. He has five Oscars, 17 Emmys. It was a very moving night, and it was all for a terrific cause. They were benefiting the scholarship program at Boston College, and uh, certainly a beautiful evening. John, thank you, and it Certainly being capped off today by the BC football team as Bach takes a reception, but yet there's another piece of laundry on the field. And it's against Navy. Charlie Weatherby's telling the officials, I don't care what the penalties are. When you look at the scoreboard, it's 41-7. We need to get out of here. I bet Charlie Weatherby can't hardly speak right now. Mm-hmm. Illegal block below the waist, back towards the ball. On the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Well, one thing we give uh, <clears throat> Joe Reed and his staff, they've done a good job today, but he did explain something that missed us last week. Exactly. Defensive delay of game. And that's when the old uh, defensive linemen try to jerk to draw the offensive lineman off the line of scrimmage and illegal procedure. That's a dead ball. That's a dead ball delay of game. So we learned something. 
But that is a new rule this year. Mm -hmm. And Lambert, nowhere to run. So he gets hammered, running up the middle. J.D. Schmidt, redshirt freshman, number 44, from McLean, Virginia. Let's take a look at our Beck's Beer Game Summary. It's all about Tim Hasselbeck. Career numbers, 355 yards. Washington with a buck seven. Let's get back to more of that in a minute. Malinowski, well short of his intended receiver. And that receiver is Brandon Rampani. And the Naval Academy, four fumbles, two of them in which they lost. The first-time career starter, Ed Malinowski, a quarterback, only accounting for 43 total yards of offense. Time of possession in the second half, folks, 11.51 for BC, 4.23 for the Naval Academy. Naval Academy still looking for their first first down of the second half. On the day, maybe three of 12 third down conversions. Malinowski throws and got a man down there. It's good for a first down to the 41-yard line is Dominic Bailey out of Cypress Creek High School in Houston, Texas. Second catch today. We had three coming into that. 22 yards on the pickup. And this is where I think you would better serve a guy like Malinowski who hasn't played much to get into more of a drop-back mode as opposed to running and, and throwing on the run. You bet. See his feet are set. He delivers a good football. Same thing to the same receiver, Rand Panning, with another catch. They give him credit to just shy of the 49-yard line, probably a matter of inches from the first down. Looks like he's about half a length of the ball short. Last year for Malinowski, played five games, played 16 plays against Hawaii, went one of three passing for 41 yards, and then left the game with a separated shoulder. Malinowski, 7 of 14, 72 yards today. Fullback. Nice strength by the BC defender. And that defender was Marco Williams, a sophomore linebacker from Tampa, Florida. And I would imagine right now it makes sense for Navy to keep playing this quickly. No huddle. See how many second and third stringers we can I do for you from BC. Watch Blitz out. backside. Got him. Steve Martin. My friends say, Steve, how can you be so open on that blitz? Well, I'll tell you what, Steve Martin. A wild and crazy guy coming off the edge. Luckily, uh, Raheem Lambert didn't get his legs rolled up in that pileup. Good yeah. job by calling the blitz. Here it comes again. BC with two sacks. Nice effort. Far sideline, Chris Worthing. Check that. That's number 86, Billy Hubbard. And these are the type of things you can do defensively. When you've got a 41 to 7 lead, you can take chances, you can try and bring people from different angles. Spaziani, I'm telling you, trying to defend a Navy offense, given their two best quarterbacks aren't in the lineup, but trying to defend the option uh, has been a tough chore, believe me. You're seeing Frank Spaziani and this defensive crew have played well this afternoon. Not as many frowns in the forehead for Frank right now for the rest of this my game. Kids, my kids used to tell me, Dad, uh, your forehead wrinkles up. We don't like you. That's right. <laughs> but guess what, Frank? You got tonight to enjoy, babe. And then he got butt check next week. Yeah. Enjoy enjoy watching this film because you're going to slap on some uh, Virginia Tech. And you think defending the option was tough? Oh, man. Try and defend Michael Vick. Go on, on the offense. Folks, we know of what we speak down. to. We've seen him twice in the last three weeks. What can't the guy do? I'm still tickled. By that 70, what, the 65-yard incompletion last week with a mere flick of the wrist. And, all, and didn't miss by much. What do they call him? The total package. You bet. Malinowski throwing. Ooh, nice reaction. That ball got on Rampani a lot quicker than he thought it was going to. Nice game to the 40-yard line. But Michael Vick and company with Suggs, 14-yard pickup. Suggs running well. Their O-line doing a good job. And then what Vic can do, just solo. 
He breaks containment if you flush him out. And the key for Virginia Tech will be their defensive improvement. Yeah. 11.28 to go in our ball game. BC on top of Navy, 41 to seven. We'll return to Chestnut Hill Mass in a moment. BC about 11 minutes and 28 seconds away from going above the 500 mark to two and one. Malinowski under pressure, it's up for grabs, it's out of bounds, quack, quack. Boy, they put some heat on Mr. Malinowski on that one. Paul Cook called his name a couple of times on the blitz. Richard freshman, Korea, Ohio. You know, Malinowski is not going to lead his team to victory, but there's one thing about this. He's going to be their quarterback for the next couple of weeks. He'll learn from his performance. And I think the offensive coaches and, and, and Charlie Weatherby and his staff We'll learn about this young man. What can he do well, and how can we implement this into our options? Sure enough. Tough kid. And you see those little tan things around his elbow? A lot of people wonder, well, what are those things for? You play on AstroTurf, and I can, I can guarantee you, you Amen. know what they're for. Amen. So Randall Cunningham with a big one uh, against your old teammate the other day. Hit him on both elbows. Oh, man, look at Green. Green brings some pack, uh, some power, doesn't it? Well, Green's 215 pounds, and I saw him in the locker room before the game. This guy is chiseled in the upper body. Yeah, look at these guns. Look, look at these guns. Yeah. And we mentioned it early in the game. As a running back, you can either be the hammer or the nail. <laughs> I've always found the hammer <laughs> more fun. Yes, no lie. You know what? If I'm the nail, <laughs> I don't like football that much. Not at all. I think we're looking at the William Green show. I thought he, that might have done it for him. St. Pierre is in, looking to throw. Goes underneath, Josh Servi, tight end. He gets the first down. Josh, a special teamer, a long snapper. Last year, it's his second catch this season. Had a good time talking to his old man the other day, John, yesterday. Said, John, who's in the food distribution business, follows Josh all over the country. I said, that's terrific. He said, I mean... That's going from Little League to high school to college. He says, hey, can't stop now. You know what? My parents were the exact same way. you got to love that. Uh, I played uh, Clemson for four years, and we played all over the country. My parents never missed a game that I played in. I'll tell you what, ain't nothing like it. You Green never... is taken down in the backfield. You cannot say or express enough appreciation to your parents for stuff like and that. And you never forget it. That's right. Time for our Advanced Auto Parts play of the game. Advanced Auto Parts, the best parts are our people. A guy named DeWalt, pretty good game today. Running free, running by Takasaki on that one. And for, the, had, for this afternoon, six catches, 111 yards and two touchdowns. Four touchdowns the past two games. And BC's offense has really hit its stride. Mm -hmm. That's right. Remember when uh, or two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we were watching uh, Mike Leeson do some of the uh, cut-ins. Their game at West Virginia, we were stunned that they played so poorly. Deep sideline ball from St. Pierre. A connection to Keith Hemming. It'll be first and goal, BC at the nine-yard line. Brian St. Pierre out of Danvers, Mass. Good-looking throw, a 60% passer last year in limited action. Came in 7 for 12 today. That's a good-looking ball. And this coaching staff loves Brian St. Pierre, and you can certainly see why. And they're going to start to like Hemmings, number uh, number 12, six foot one, 201 pound sophomore, 39 yard catch. Nice game. See if Green gets the carry here. He does. Some good blocks, cuts back against the Green. Picks up a few. What is not to like about that old line? And you know who does a good job? The fullbacks here at Boston College. In fact. Greg Toll is in there now, number 16. Little guy for a fullback here at BC, 5'11", 217. He was all universe in the state of New Jersey. But the question that I have, the only non-starter on the offensive line, John Richardson, Zukaskis is out of it. The other four starters are in this game with it 41 to 7. Yeah, that, I'm a little surprised by that. Green fake, St. Pierre rolling. He's got serving, touchdown. be a 
tremendous momentum boost for this BC offense. Two wins against Army and Navy, leading into next week against Virginia Tech, which, if you don't remember 1999, BC played Virginia Tech very tough, plus they've got them here. Servey, four catches, 27 yards and a touch. Martino for the point after his first of the day. He's got one sock up and a red shoe on. Touchdown, St. Pierre. Easily done to Josh Servi in a BC route. Today's Big East football game is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Advanced Auto Parts, the best part is our people. And by Bex. A beer apart. If you like the passing game, I'm not talking about making passes. I'm talking about the passing game. Those girls, were, those girls were cheating on their uh, push-ups yeah, yeah, just a little bit. You know what? They weren't. They weren't quite getting all the way down. For, well, hey, when you got to do 48 of them, I mean, yeah, come on. You know one, what? In one set. You know what? I'm not one of those best people at counting, but I'd be going 2, 4, 6, 18, 19, 20. Let's go back to Mike Gleason in our AT&T studios. Mike? Well, Sims, the ECU's uh, David Garrard uh, going upstairs again. We already saw the 46-yard uh, touchdown pass in the first half. Looks right, comes back to the left side. This is Rashawn Burns. He's in for six. Still raining hard in Greenville. 34-17 Pirates over the Orangemen. And that Big Ten game, Northwestern playing tough up in Madison against Wisconsin. Damian Anderson, 15 carries, 147 yards, 31-24. Dave? All right, thank you, Mike. I can remember years ago when East Carolina was dying to get in the Big East. They're taking it out on Syracuse today. Completion up to the 29-yard line that Chris Worthing, his first catch of the day. How about Brian St. Pierre coming off the bench? Three for four, 52 yards and a touchdown. On the day, BC's total yardage uh, passing is 407 yards through the year. Josh Servi with his first touchdown. Is that latest score by BC. Actually, Fred Candetto is in the game right now, and he throws a first down pass. Dominic Bailey. Candetto, freshman out of Orange City, Florida, 5'11", a buck 93. Getting first opportunity. You know, Mike Gleason said that it was raining. Seems like Greenville. it's always raining in Greenville, right? That's the remnants of that uh, tropical storm. Sure. I bet it's raining harder on the Syracuse sideline than it is yeah. the uh, East Carolina. Well, I tell you what, the you know, Orange is taking a little bit of a slide Football. here. Personal foul on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Joseph Ryder, the R official, is getting hoarse. He's almost hoarse. I guarantee you he has had more official calls on, on flags that have been thrown than Cedric Washington has carries this afternoon. Yeah. We need to check we'll, that. We'll verify that. We need to see how many penalties have been called and how many runs Cedric Washington has I think has you're had. close to the pin on that. Here comes a blitz. It's picked up. Candetto throws out of bounds. High and wide. And took a blow. Penalty flag. And that was it. Be curious to see what this one is. BC 11 penalties for 123 yards. Yikes. This flag situation is almost becoming comical. An eligible downfield on the offense. Inside man was covered up and went downfield. Joe's going to have tendonitis in that right arm. I bet you the Charlie Weatherby and his staff will have tendonitis in their hand. Ooh, running, 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 this, running this tape back and forth. Mm -hmm. You see Tim DeRuder, the defensive coordinator. It's a long afternoon, but you can expect coming into this place. Although Navy has put up some uh, valiant fights, and they pulled one off here in 98. This game is so different than the past three meetings between these two oh, teams. Oh, isn't close. Oh. The last three times these two teams have met, BC has outscored Navy. 88-80. Well, they put a little separation in there. Yeah, this is going to be a, one of those days you call padding your stats. 11 penalties for Navy. 
Check that 11 for BC and 7 for Nate. As they run that backup fullback, Pat Haynes, up the middle. There's a serious history. We thought for sure coming in we could have a chance to keep the momentum going as it related to close games. Not the case. Next up for Navy. Horn Fox is Texas Christian. That pass not close by Condetto. It'll be TCU down in Annapolis, and then uh, Navy goes on the road. They play at Air Force. Back home for Notre Dame. Rutgers, Toledo, at Tulane, Wake Forest, and Army. And that Army game will be at PSI Met Stadium in Baltimore. And I stand corrected. There have been 18 total penalties this afternoon. Mr. Washington had 24 carries. I told, I told you, you were so close to the pin. You were, were close. You're on the green. And then look at another. Whoa, baby. Steve Martin. Oh, did he unload. Wow. He got a free one, and he said, I will take it. And number 55 from Dalton, Illinois. Same uh, town that produced Donovan McNabb. And this shot somewhat reminds you of the bruised sternum shot that Steve McNair took last oh. week right there. You're talking about a form tackle. You just witnessed one. One step drop, knocked down. Sean Guthrie, better hands. He might have had a pick. Sean, a 6'4 junior out of Miami. Plays basketball. Three sacks last year. This is one of the uh, downsides of running the Navy offense. Fullback's a big part of it. Your quarterback is going to take a lot of shots. And believe me, I don't care if you're a freshman or senior. That hurts. That's why not everyone plays football. Amen. <laughs> That's why They've got tennis. They've got golf. They've got all kind of things. And right now, there's a lot of moms around the country who want to take this particular segment of the program and play it back for some they're going. Kids. They're going, son, do you see what could happen to you? <laughs> BC takes over on downs. I think if you're a football kid, if you're a guy that's going to play football, you know, I, used to, I used to get hurt out in the backyard riding my bike. It was safer being on the field? You know, I literally I literally ran into my neighbor's house on my bike when I was about eight or nine years you're old. You're looking the other way. And no, no, no. I was riding the bike. I was racing my, my neighbor. He had a motor, one of those little mini bikes. Yeah. And we were racing down my backyard. And you had shut out my And I was, I, was out, I was winning the race, okay? And this was probably only a little five-horsepower uh, mini bike. So I was, I was feeling good about myself. And I went to stop, and it was the old bikes where you push the pedals oh, back. Yeah, buddy. My chain came off. Plus so you had when no I looked down to find out that the chain was off, I hit my neighbor's house. Mm. So the house was tr uh, treated for a concussion, huh? No, I think I was. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm still suffering from it right now. <laughs> Another penalty on the field. That penalty flag that. on the field. Well, you know what? You should have never said anything when we were coming out of the hotel today. That might have put the, that put the kibosh on this whole deal. But we've had everything in the gamut called. We've, we now have a face mask. We haven't heard that one this afternoon. <laughs> See, we're getting close. But you know what? I, I said the face mask, five yards from the end of the run. It's still second down. Joseph needs to find a hot glass of tea with some lemon in it. Mm. His voice is about gone. <laughs> I, I got some spray up here. Singer saving grace. You could use that too. <laughs> you know what? We're only we're only five penalties away. We've got six minutes to go before we can get up with uh, Mr. Washington's yeah. carries. It being that he more than likely won't be back in again. Wow, St. Pierre looking to throw again. Boy, there may be some notes from the Navy and Marine folks at Tom O'Brien. Dear Tom, Semper Fi, but <laughs> Boston College, let's talk about next week's game, the Vitek game. That's going to be a beauty up here, number four. we got Connecticut, Syracuse. We'll probably see them in that month of October against Kent and Rutgers and possibly Temple, then Notre Dame and uh, at Miami. That's a good way to finish. But Virginia Tech, young defense. You better hope you get your two linebackers back, Scott Bradley and Ryan Birch. Right, because if you don't have them, it's going to be a tough chewer with them. Now, without them, woo. And you, and you think Michael Vick is quick down in Blacksburg on natural grass. Uh oh breakthrough into the secondary is Curtis Bolden. Out of Dorchester, Mass. 
record of the first two opponents does change just a little bit, doesn't it? 16 yards on that carry. Fifteen and eight. And what a tremendous job. Everybody talks about the things that have happened here. A lot of people overlook what happened last year with Tom O'Brien and turning this program around, winning eight games, and he's laying the foundation. You know, another recruiting class. He redshirted a bunch of kids from this season. He's real happy about that. Trevor White his, on the carry. His job for next season, not that he's looking forward. Trying to find some more offensive linemen because they have got... Yeah, he Five can. new faces that are going to be in there next season. That's right. Well, let's look at some of the second teamers. Let's see, Leo Bell's a redshirt freshman, 6'8", 281. Yeah, John Richardson's a junior, 6'4", 285. Todd McNiff, 6'5", 271. Augie Hoffman's a redshirt freshman, 6'3", 303. And Dan Murphy, a sophomore, 6'6", 289. Those are the guys, the second line guys on the O-line for Boston College. We may have, well, almost six. It was saved in the secondary by Matt Brooks. Derek Knight running free again. Picked up 25 on that play. Got an injured John Richardson, too. Number two left guard. Hurts his wrist on this play. And John was the one pulling around. This guy runs a little bit like Omari Walker. People that will remember BC certainly remember him. Knight, four carries, 38 yards. Kevin Kiley in at quarterback, and not oh, a heck of a lot of running room right there, Kiley. The quarterback, let's get down to Mike Gleason, AT&T Studios. Hey, Dave and Jeff, check out what's going on in Madison. The Badgers, 11 game, a winning streak on the line, fourth and eight. Kustak rolls out of the pocket, finds Derek Thompson, 29 yards, and they kick the extra point for the equalizer. They're deadlocked at 31 apiece. Dave? Thanks, Mike. That's some finishing. There have been some upsets early in this season, haven't there? There have been some folks running free, too. That Syracuse game, the East Carolina receiver was wide open. The same thing in the world for uh, Northwestern. There have been some big surprise teams. I think UCLA would be at the top of that How list. How about that? The other one that would be on the downside, how about the Alabama Crimson Tide? Mm -hmm. I think Mr. DeBose would be getting a little... Uh, I heard a little oh, he rumor, a little rumor this week that maybe Tommy Bowden, who is currently at Clemson with a five-year contract... He's only in, what, the second, third year there? This will be his second year of the five-year deal. Rumored that he may be replacing DeBose before... Uh, we look at the 2001 year coming in. Alabama, big disappointment, preseason number three. There we go. Kylie. And a handoff to number 25, DJ Sutton. DJ, a uh, backup defensive back. A chance to carry the football. I want to thank our stage manager, Russ, Russ Wenham, and Statman Rich Frisia and John Martin. They've had plenty to do today. Gentlemen, thank you. And as an offensive line right now, Dave, this is a part of the game. We used to call this bludgeoning with a dull instrument. <laughs> Pounding on people until their submission. Kyle, oh, he took what a leg. shot. Oh, boy. Somebody got their money's worth. That was one of those little, you know, KO shots. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah, bring it in here standing up and give me a free shot. Bang. Watch, watch this. Look, watch, watch his head. Oh, Ooh. baby. We talk about form tackling. Ben Matthews. Ben Matthews is certainly showing you how to explode. A nice job by BC to at least keep it on the ground, though, since further rubbing it in. 202 to go in a game long since out of hand at 48 to 7. Talk some more about this uh, their matchup. BC Va Tech next week, Virginia Tech. Game's gonna be up here. That Andre Davis we'll have to watch him. And tell you what, with this young secondary for BC, they're gonna get tested next week. They're gonna get tested. The big key can the BC offensive line protect Hasselback? the way they did this afternoon. Right. Uh, Virginia Tech's defense is certainly not what it was a year ago, losing eight starters. But, but the one thing they're going to do, though, 
They're going to have Michael Vick, and they're going to see a running back uh, that I think is going to be the next superstar in the Big East. And his name is Lee Suggs, and he is a player that's got size and he's got speed. He reminds me a little bit of Willie Green. Take it outside. Candetto, first action this season. The jangle of car keys has been heard here for about the last half hour. So I think I can make... smell some carbon monoxide. <laughs> I think the cars are running right now. Oh, yeah, they are. Candetto, well overthrown. Not much of a chance on that one. Big East against uh, all opponents going to be helped along with this game today. It came in the Big East at 13 and 3. Why Syracuse trailing down in uh, East Carolina does not help the cause. Orangemen, should they lose, would drop to 1 and 2. Carolina, East Carolina would go to 3 and 1. Williams, hanger for punt. Takes a BC bounce. Run up losing three, four yards. So coming up in the final 111 here. Tom O'Brien, nothing to sweat here against his alma mater. BC been in control for a long time. It has been all Boston College, and these folks sticking around to the glorious end. They want to see it all. A buck 11 to go in the ballgame. 600, coming up on 630 yards, total offense for BC. After a couple of weeks off, we'll be back in the Big East Network on October 14th, noon start for the first of five consecutive weeks of Big East football action. Make sure you check your local listings for a matchup and get ready to follow all the action down the stretch in this 2000 season. The Big East Game of the Week. We'll be back on October 14th. Kevin Kiley, his second series at quarterback here for BC, just going to take a knee. And that may be a familiar name to you. You know, his is dad. It, that is the son of, huh? Son of the Kevin Kiley from uh, used to be with see it with uh, what uh, Turner Sports. Turner Sports, exactly. I think if you're a BC fan, you have to be impressed with your offense, with Hasselbeck, DeWalt making the big play, but more importantly, taking care of business with a team that you should have won, preparing for next week. you got to get your healthy people back on defense because, believe me, you're going to have your hands full with number seven, Michael Vick. No doubt about it. That will do it. 4-0 and home openers under Tom O'Brien. A lot of BC players or a lot of Navy players are going to seek out Ryan Reed, their former teammate. No doubt about it. Once again, final score from Chestnut Hill, Boston College, 48, Navy 7. Don't forget, we're back in the Big East Network, October 14th, 12 noon. Check your local listings for the matchup in our Big East Game of the Week. For Jeff Bostic and John Sanders, I'm Dave Sims. Have a good afternoon, everybody. As we leave you from Boston College, the proceeding has been a presentation of ESPN Regional Television. Have a good afternoon, folks.